Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily with Andrew Hustler Patterson and Michael Remus. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily, a big game day edition as the Winnipeg Jets host the beasts of the National Hockey League, the Boston Bruins tonight at Canada Life Center. Lots on tonight's game coming up. Jamie Thomas from Jets TV and 680 CGOB Jets Radio Broadcast, along with our guy Paul Edmonds, is going to join us in a few minutes down from the rink. We'll also discuss the Jets, as well as some of the other big topics in and around the National Hockey League with our pal Brandon Rewicki from Skates and Plates. We'll also hook up with the president of the Winnipeg Football Club, Wade Miller, to find out more about the successful bid bringing the 2025 Grey Cup to Winnipeg. Should be a great show. We did hear from Rick Bonus this morning. We'll have some of that for you, as well as Kyle Connor, who did speak today heading into the game after, um, well, there was some conflicting reports on whether the guys turned down an interview request afterwards. Bottom line was he and Mark Scheifele, Nito Niederreiter, spent quite a bit of time on the pine in the second period. Connor talked about that and a big bounce back for that line tonight, going up against the best team in the National Hockey League. So uh, should be a good one. Great to see everyone here already fired up for tonight's game. A lot of Fired up folks from last night's event down at Canada Life Center, which we'll get to in a minute as well. Um, if you are just finding us, welcome to Winnipeg Sports Talk. Make sure to hit that red subscribe button here on YouTube. And you can always find the audio content just in time for your ride home from work. Every day, search Winnipeg Sports Talk at your favorite podcast um, provider and subscribe there as well. Listen, just before we get Michael Remus in here, I have to give a big thanks to the sponsors that make this show happen each and every day. Princess Auto, Cool Bet Canada, Little Brown Jug, Culligan Water, Vita Health Fresh Market, Wallace & Wallace, Canadian Club, F Apparel, Consolidated Supply, Manitoba Battery, Nick and Nicky DQ, Boston Pizza, Royal Sports, and we'll get to a why not question of the day for our friends at Not Auto Corp over at Waverly and McGillivray. Michael Remus, did you sur uh, survive... The rebar mitzvah and the good times at AEW last night. What a show that was. That was a lot of fun. Great, great crowd. Uh, Winnipeg, definitely a wrestling city, as Chris Jericho said. And they were there uh, cheering on him and Kenny Omega at the end. That was the highlight probably of the night. And uh, pretty cool to be at a TV taping on, you know, a big show in, uh, in the U.S. on TBS and TNT. You know, they taped, uh, what, Dynamite and Rampage after. I did not realize there was two uh, TV tapings happening. So um, pretty cool to be a part of that production. And, you know, I recorded it and, you know, fast forward a, a couple things. Uh, my favorite part was when Jeff Jarrett hit Orange Cassidy with the garbage can. I'm like, hey, I know that garbage can. I've thrown thrown out stuff in that at the arena. So seeing a you know, prop that I've personally used, uh, used as a weapon, pretty cool. It was uh, it, it was just an awesome night. I mean, a great show put on by uh, the stars of the AEW. Production quality was top drawer. Um, but what really made it last night was the crowd. And I mean, we've talked a little bit about this on the program, how, I mean, a big star as Chris Jericho is, of course, Kenny Omega, Don Callis, who joined us last week. Um, this was a long time coming, and this city was ready for it. And uh, it really just was an awesome, awesome night. Great to see so many WSTers out there. Shout out to our contest winners who uh, seem to have a pretty good time as well. And tell you what, I'm sure that that will not be the last time AEW comes through. They actually did announce six more Canadian dates in the summer, not in Winnipeg, but a couple in Saskatchewan as well. So, uh, Overall, I think uh, the event, there was a lot of hype going into it. I think it exceeded it. Now I guess the big question is, people had a hell of a lot of fun at the rink last night. Might they have as much fun tonight as the Jets take on the Boston Bruins in a huge matchup as they try to get back in the win column after a tough loss to finish up what was already a great road trip in Carolina earlier this week? Yeah, Jets looking to get back into it. And a lot of talk today after the skate about uh, the benching that happened. Or sorry, it wasn't a benching. It was uh, missing a couple shifts, according to the coach. Us, and there was a lot, all eyes were on the skate this morning. Uh, you know, would Morrissey and Pierre-Luc Dubois return? And you noticed I got all excited when Dubois was skating with the top line. 
I put a, a beautiful picture of him as the thumbnail on YouTube for this. <laughs> Only, and I had it in the title until recently. Um, you know, Dubois is back, but uh, Rick Bonus had to shut that one down uh, during his media availability. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, I think we were all sort of expecting that it sounded like Pierre-Luc Dubois and Josh Morrissey would be back. Um, but no Pierre-Luc Dubois. It's going to be a little bit of time. We'll see whether he's able to play on the weekend. But he won't be in tonight. And, you know, a big part of our conversation yesterday was how do they handle Dubois coming back in? How would the lines look? It, 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 we, we thought after the you know early part of the skate that we were going to see Connor and Dubois back together with Wheeler and then Ehlers and Niederreiter with Mark Scheifele and Vlad Nemetsnikov moving down to the Adam Lowry line. Um, that will not be the case. I think we're going to get a chance, a great chance for redemption for Scheifele, Connor, and Nito Niederreiter together um, and keeping Nikolai Ehlers and Wheeler along with Nemetsnikov, who has proven to be such a versatile player since coming over in that deadline deal. Yeah, and the, there was all the talk yesterday. What are the lines going to be when Dubois returns? Who's playing with who? And we had the answer, but he's not returning, so we're just going to go back to what it was. And uh, yeah, Nemestikov, what he can play second line center. He uh, was on third line wing with the with you know the lines they had, but no, he's back to where they were. So uh, Nemestikov and Ehlers have played really well together, and I I was sad to see them broken up, but I did like the idea of Ehlers with Shifley and Niederreiter. But um, it will be, you know, they'll be going with whatever, you know, they had with Ehlers, Nemestikov, and Wheeler, and Connor, Shifley, Niederreiter. But, well, I guess it'll be up to, it's always up to them, Huss, if they see the ice and if they stay together, right? Because if it's, you know, they're not playing well, Bones isn't afraid to uh, make him take a seat. No, and we saw that. And listen, I think that we'll see a much better uh, performance from that line. And hopefully the other three lines can be as effective as they were because the coach was very complimentary about them. It didn't take long to get some very, very hot takes in the chat. Our guy SK has quite the declaration today, Reem. If the Jets win tonight, I say they have a chance. If they lose tonight, they're done. They need to show they can beat the Bruins. Here's hoping they win. Not ready to stop watching hockey. SK, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration. I'm not sure that if they don't beat the number one team in the National Hockey League, they're done. Um, I will say, though, Remus, this is a huge, huge opportunity for the Winnipeg Jets. I think the boost they would get from playing with Boston and potentially beating Boston would be huge going into that game in Nashville on Saturday afternoon. And, you know, as we talked about yesterday... The Jets might be getting the Boston Bruins at a pretty good time, considering they're, you know, I've heard from a number of people covering the team. They're sort of ready for the playoffs right now. They clinched everything. And um, right now, I mean, you don't expect a team like that to lose to the Chicago Blackhawks 6 to 3. I believe they've lost three of their last four right now coming into this game. So, um, you know, you know the Winnipeg Jets are going to be incredibly motivated. We'll see what we get from the Boston Bruins tonight, who have been the standard so far in the NHL all season long. Yeah, I think you're seeing that with Tampa a little and with Boston. Like, Tampa's a team they've been in, but the last three cup finals, like, their spot's pretty locked in. I think they've been a coasting a little here the last bit. And Boston, too, they're locked in at number one. And they've actually lo lost a couple games in the last week. They lost to Edmonton last Thursday, 3-2. Lost to Detroit. On Sunday, 5-3, and lost to Chicago. Wasn't Chicago, like, was Boston minus, like, 400 favorite or something, like, really, really oh, yeah. stupid? Uh, really stupid. So they lost 6-3. So part of me is like, yeah, they're catching Boston at a good time. But part of me is like, well, Boston's on this two-game losing streak. They're for sure winning now. But I think the Jets, the last few games, knowing they have tough opponents ahead of them, like Florida and Tampa, um, they have elevated their game. And... They stepped it up. They had a nice game against Minnesota and San Jose last week. So you hope it continues here, you know, at home, expecting a good crowd as well. And we you know how important it is. And also, I think there's going to be a lot of Boston fans too. Uh, the original six teams, uh, original six teams draw a lot here. And I think, well, it, I think it'll be Bruce a great fans atmosphere. fans have been looking forward to getting to that rink and pumping out their chest, sticking out their chests all season long, considering yes. the way the team's been. I mean, it's the one time they come every season. And you're right with an original six. I mean, it's not like Montreal or Toronto, but there always is quite a bit of Boston, a few Boston fans. And I have a feeling the bandwagon's added a few folks as well this year with the way the Bruins have played. One thing I'll say, Reem, before we get to Bones, historically, 
the visit of the Bruins every year has always been one of the great games of the season. I mean, I can think back to a couple huge Winnipeg Jet wins. Um, I know someone, would, I think one bird was mentioning uh, the Brandon Tanev hat trick game, that 6 5 win a few years back. Um, you know, regardless of where the teams are in the standings, there's always a great atmosphere when the Boston Bruins come to town. And I think it might even be taken to another level this year with the way they have been the standard all season long in the NHL. Yeah, the standard uh, Jets Bruins home game is that Brandon Tanev hat trick game in 2018. And I think there's been some other ones. I remember Claude Julian always being fired up on the bench. And again, original six team, a lot of, uh, you know, it's just one of those games here where you have a lot of visiting jerseys and they're going to be, you know, competing or, you know, make a noise. And they are pumped about the Bruins play this season, you know, record setting pace. We'll see if they can continue it, but they have stumbled here. And uh, I think it's just, you know, that point of the season where you got to locked up and it's hard to stay focused against a team like Chicago where you lose 6-3. Six, six, I mean, that's pretty pretty wild here that they would lose on this kind of season. Anyone can win any night. It just shows you there. Yeah, well, that would it, it would have been nice to get on that. As you mentioned, I think they were about a plus 385 home underdog on the cool bet lines. Um, uh, but let's get to the Jets, though, and the focus, of course, coming off of the road trip after an eventful game against the Carolina Hurricanes where the Jets lost 5-3. The big story coming out of the game was the fact that Mark Scheifele, Kyle Connor, and Nino Niederreiter found themselves stable to the bench for 12 minutes in the second period. And um, Rick Bonus obviously fielded questions on that. Kyle Connor spoke as well with some real interesting comments. We'll have that for you a little bit later on. Uh, but let's get to Bones. Uh, talking about the response from Kyle Connor and Mark Scheifele in the third period after they were back on the ice uh, as things uh, got tight in the third against the Canes. They had a good response in the third period. Actually, um, it wasn't going to be that long. They only what they only missed half the second period. Well, I was going to go to the, the uh, six-minute mark at that time out and go back to them. But the other three lines were playing so well, I just could decide to let it go. So was the original plan to let them sit there the whole period? Absolutely not. But be, and we got, I was just going to get to that six-minute timeout and then get them back out there. You know. So, it, But the other three lines had it gave us a lot of momentum. So I just let it go, but it did go longer than I thought it would. When I, yeah, I, I haven't heard. Anything. I would expect more from them going forward. Then, they're, they're, listen, they're they're great players. They're they're they're, they're going to carry us into the playoffs. So we need them playing like they can. Some nights it just doesn't go your way. It's as simple as that. It's just no different than a golfer shoots 62 one day and 76 the next day. Some nights it's not your night. So you just take a little quick breather and regroup. And they had a good third period. Yeah. All right, All right, there's, there's Rick, Rick Bonus, Bonus on, on uh, two, two of, of his stars, stars and uh, the, the uh, response, response he saw from, from them, them in the third period, Remo. Ah, muted there. You know, they know that they need these guys uh, to play, and look, it wasn't working out, so they sat him down for a bit, and... I don't think it changes their standing on the team. They're top players, and they're going to be reunited and be given a second chance. And they said, "Look, they're going to come back, and uh, they're going to come back and and play." Sorry, I'm all rattled here. I had we're having some audio issues uh, on the back, so yeah. The uh, uh, but but everyone could hear that like on the uh, on the stream. Like, yeah, yeah. Sure you just could in, and then I have a tough time. Him. Um, here on that. Um, so, uh, you know, listen, it's going to be all eyes on that line tonight. And and you know, we heard from Nino Niederreiter after the game. Um, and I think a lot was made of the fact that Connor and Shifley were requested. Um, you know, as we'll hear from Kyle Connor a little later on, he came in, his number wasn't on the board, and they just sort of went about their thing. I mean, uh, it may have been an executive decision from uh, the PR staff saying that maybe that wasn't a good time to be speaking to those guys. And obviously, Niederreiter handled himself very well and I think said a lot of the things that needed to be say, uh, said. Uh, that being said, Rick Bonus was asked about, um, you know, his uh, you know, star players not speaking to the media after the game. They're they're grown men. They're professionals. They uh, they, they deal with it. They're not little kids. You can't guide them around every little bit. They they make decisions on their own. I met with them all this the, the two of them, the three of them this morning, and we move on and get ready for Boston. That's what we do. 
Yeah, uh, and there's the coach. And as I said, we'll hear from Kyle Connor a little bit afterwards explaining, uh, you know, kind of where he was at. And I think he said it was probably better, a little less emotional speaking today as opposed to after the game. Um, but for Rick Bonus, I mean, he's thinking about the Boston Bruins, um, not about what happened after the game in Carolina. Reef. Yeah, like I don't think... You know, those guys not speaking. I think it's more of a bigger deal for us than it is for them. I mean, Rick Bonus had his conversation with them. He took his action. He's, you know, they've they've talked about it. Like, what more? Like, do they really need to talk to us? Like, we want to hear, you know, the accountability, but I think they have it within the team. And look, if he came out today, you know, he did come out today and addressed it. You know, I think sometimes after a, a game like that, maybe you're not in the right state of mind. You want to protect yourself from maybe saying something you might regret. Or, you know, maybe you are really upset. And, look, if you're going to take a day off and then, you know, come the, come in the next day. Now, they, like, didn't practice. So there wasn't the opportunity to come the next day. But uh, I think it's, you know, it's more of a story for us than it is for the team. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I totally understand why the media asked for those guys. Um, and to be honest, I mean, if you're in the PR department and your job is PR, um, Sometimes there are some situations where maybe it's better to keep guys away from microphones, and maybe that was the situation. Regardless, um, let's get back to Bones, because, I mean, regardless of who talked afterwards, and again, credit to Nito Niederreiter. I thought he was the perfect guy to speak in that situation, considering how thoughtful he was and the way he really owned it. I mean, I, there's no way you could have had someone step up to a microphone and handle it better than Niederreiter did. Um, but Sean Reynolds asked Bones if, you know, it's harder to bench star players than maybe some of the players a little further down the lineup. Is it any harder or maybe more of a minefield possibly to bench star players or take away ice time from star players compared to... Yeah, I, I wouldn't say they, they were benched. We took a couple of shifts away from them, right? So if they were benched, they wouldn't have played the rest of the game. They weren't benched. I took a couple of shifts away from them, yeah. So, you know, they're, they're proud guys. And you, you, I know they're proud. Uh, they're very proud guys. And I, you, you, you know you're going to get to, they're not going to hang their heads and sulk is what I'm, some guys will big, get bad, miss a couple of shifts and it bothers them. Uh, I knew they, those two would respond and, you know. There's Rick. Uh, I, I, I do love the new definition of benching, Remo, um, that we got from the coach there. Uh, if it was if they were benched, they wouldn't have played later on. It was just a, a timeout, taking a few shifts away. Um, yeah. And Bones did say, and Bones did say, part of it was you know we was intending on bringing those guys back earlier, but the uh, three lines that were playing were really going at that time, and you know it's certainly uh, within the coach's rights to keep rolling guys that were getting the job done when some of his top guys weren't. Yeah, it reminds me of what Happy Gilmore said. I didn't throw the club. I was just placing it in the forest so it could be with its friends. And he's like, I, I didn't bench them. I just took a couple shifts away. Come on, guys. They weren't going. So uh, I see I see people in chat. I'm going to be like, oh, we're still talking about about this from last game. And this is what they talked about at the at the morning skate. And it was, I think it was a good question by Reddy saying, hey, is it tougher? Because I think there's been some calls. I mean, there's always going to be comments from people in chat, but saying, well, if they're benching these guys, maybe this guy needs needs to get benched. Bench everyone, but uh, I like well, hearing it. A, it it absolutely opens the eyes of everyone you know, yeah. on the team. I mean, you know, if you can do it to those guys, you can do it to anyone. And listen, this is the reason why we're talking about it and why Bones talked about it today is because this is all about the response from some of those top players on the Winnipeg Jets in a huge game against um, an incredible test in the Boston Bruins. And Bones talked about the message that he wanted those players to take from the way that they were utilized in the game, not necessarily benched, but some of the ice time taken away and how that can uh, help the team and those players in particular tonight. Uh, well, yeah, clearly things weren't going their way that night. Um, so the, the message is regroup on the bench and and be ready to go the next time your, your name is called which they were in the third period so uh, you're when you're sitting there you're mad you're not playing i get it that's all part of it um but the message is okay clearly 
we got to pick this up a little bit and we got to respond and we got a better response in the third so like, like I said they're pros they're men they have a lot of pride and again we're, this, the, the, the top guys carry your team into the playoffs that's what the, the top guys job is to carry us into the playoffs and we're confident that they will do that you know, it, it, it's pretty clear that, um, you know, it is a long season. You're not doing this all the time. But in such a crucial point in the in the year, coming off those two wins, um, you know, Bones only, you know, only have so many cards to play. And I think playing it at that time really reinforced the urgency that everyone on that club needs to be playing with each and every game right now. And as things and the, the amount of games on the schedule dwindle out and get ready for the playoffs, I think it's also about reinforcing the accountability that they tried to really establish early on in the season. And um, Bones expanded a little bit on that about the accountability of his team and his players this season. This year has been good. Yeah, uh, I, hear I hear voices in the room. I hear voices on the bench that I didn't hear before. So, you know, a lot, there's a lot of times we close the doors and, and let, they wanted the room and it's their room. They got it. Um, so we don't hear a lot of it. We're far enough away when, be, especially between periods and a lot of these rinks, we're so far away from the, the locker room, especially in Carolina. We have no idea what they're talking about in there because we're too far. We're not hanging out the door. Listen, we're not doing that. We're getting ready for to make some adjustments and get ready for the next period so whatever uh, there's a lot of times that the doors are closed for them and you know that's the that's that's their room so all right rick bonus on it we're going to talk more about this with jamie thomas in just a second before we bring jamie in though um there was a lot of talk about you know last game but moving forward we spent quite a bit of oxygen on this program talking about how tough this stretch of five games was Rick Bonus expanded a little bit on the recent stretch for his club and stepping up against tough teams, no tougher than the one that'll be in Winnipeg tonight to take on the Jets. If you look at the six games, I mean, like two of the best games we were San Jose, where we gave up absolutely nothing. We couldn't score. Minnesota, where we dominated from for 60 minutes and didn't even get a point there. So, but we the Florida game, if you look at that, it was probably a, the loosest of the three games. We probably gave up too many opportunities, but we capitalized on ours. We talk a lot about timely goals, and we did that. The Tampa game was a very hard-fought game. Both teams, listen, we had, we missed four breaks breakaways in the third period so I know it's 3-2 and they hit a couple of posts but we had four breakaways in the third period alone so we're very happy with that game and the, the game in Carolina was probably the best game of the, of the three games on the road we limited their chances we limited their time in our zone we spent a, we, we cut the time in our zone in half from the Florida game and the, and the Tampa game we did a better job breaking out and uh, we, we you know we we had some good opportunity. We outchanced them. We outplayed them. We just didn't get get rewarded. So that's that's hockey. I mean, it's how you play the game. And if you play the game properly enough and take care of the process long enough, it, it's got to even out. Head coach, and we will hear from Kyle Connor, who also spoke a little bit later on. But Jamie Thomas is going to join us in just a minute. Before we do that, gang, don't forget, if you're in the need of a battery for your car, your truck, or even that summer toy you're working on this winter, Manitoba Battery has the most convenient and well-priced options in the city. So convenient that you can put an order in for the battery at lunchtime or right around now at the beginning of Winnipeg Sports Stock and have it sitting on your door two to four hours later for less money than you'd spend anywhere else in Winnipeg on the same battery. It is that simple. Manitoba Battery, the Amazon of batteries here in Winnipeg, and you're shopping local. No more fighting for a parking spot at Costco, waiting in line at Canadian Tire, for spending money on a battery at the big box stores. Let Manitoba Battery bring it to you at the best possible price while you spend time on more important things. You can give them a call at 783-8787 or order online at manitobabattery.com for citywide delivery. And of course, you can always pop in and see Donnie is great staff at Manitoba Battery at 1026 Logan Avenue. Um, hey, spring is just around the corner and our friends at Consolidated Supply are getting ready for golf season and so much more. Um, they're the leaders in irrigation as well as artificial turf, not to mention the exclusive club car dealer in Manitoba. If you have any needs for a golf cart or a similar vehicle, whether it be for recreational or industrial, but 
they also do irrigation not on people's properties and while you're working on irrigation and getting that lawn great how about a hot tub or spa or maybe a beautiful outdoor kitchen tons of options and consolidated supply along with being your first choice for engine parts and small engine repair consolidated supply is down at 1395 niaqua road east open to the public and you can check out everything they've got going on on their newly revamped website at cte.ca i've got some great submissions for the unsung hero this month but we always are welcoming more tell us about that person in your community that is heavily involved whether it be volunteering time in minor sports charity work or being that go-to person on the block or the neighborhood that always helps out those when they need it send us an email unsung hero at winnipeg sports the unsung hero for the month will get an autographed jersey from Jets All-Star defenseman Josh Morrissey. And Wallace and Wallace will make a $500 donation to the Dream Factory in the name of the Winnipeg Sports Talk listener that nominated the unsung hero. And better yet, Josh and Margot Morrissey are going to match that $500 for the Dream Factory as well. Unsung hero at winnipegsportstalk.com is uh, where you want to go. And hey, a big shout out to our friends at BP. If you're not making it out to the game tonight, pop by your local Boston Pizza, great Jets, pick up player games at most local BPs. And obviously the delicious Boston wings, ice cold schooners, gourmet pizzas, and all waiting for you with the big game on the big screen, always with full sound. And if you're staying home tonight to watch the game, you can always order online at bostonpizza.com. All right, let's get ready for a big one tonight as the Jets come home for a one-game homestand and uh, got to stand up against the best team in the National Hockey League. Jamie Thomas is back from the road and joins us before tonight's broadcast with her pal Paul Edmonds on 680 CGOB. JT, what's going on? How are you? Uh, fantastic, man. How about you guys? Uh, love the schedule and making. Um, they, they sure like to make it interesting for the Winnipeg Jets in the month of March. You know what? We'll throw you on the east, bring you back home for one. Just gets Boston, and then we'll throw it back out there again. So it's uh, it is what it is. But I, I listen before they head into this game. I know all the talk is about Connor and Shifley and, and Niederreiter, but I think a lot is what has been lost is how well they played against the Carolina Hurricanes. And all we had heard about is you know all the amount of shots that they were going to throw at you know David Riddick that night, and for them to hold. You know, one of the teams, the, the elite teams in terms of throwing shot volume at, at, at the opposition to hold them to 25 shots in your third game in four nights, I think says a lot about the direction, that the, the trend and where the team is heading right now. And sure, the results aren't there, but they're playing a lot better. Well, and, and I mean, Rick Bonus spoke about how pleased he was with the mm -hmm. other three lines for the majority of yeah. the game. And, um, you know, I mean, they really did compete against the Hurricanes. Um, and the fact of the matter was this the road trip got off to a desperately needed great start with those two yeah. wins in, in, in Florida. I mean, you're around the team on a daily basis. How big was it just for the mental psyche of the club to get a big win to start it off and then back it up with an even better game against Tampa and most yeah. importantly, getting the results that hadn't been there earlier in the week when they had played well. Yeah. I think that, that those results came because of how well they were playing and, the, and you know, yes they lost to san jose and yes they lost to minnesota but that, that kind of carried over and i think they felt like they deserved much better uh if they continue to play the way they did and sure they survived for the most part against the florida panthers and gave up a third period lead but you walk out of that one with the win and it's a big it's a big difference than last year house remember when they went out to florida the year before and they they dodged the big epic snowstorm was coming to winnipeg and then they leave that road trip 0-4 and, and weren't really in any of those games. This was totally different. Uh, Hell luck locked the door in the third period and certainly in overtime. But And then to follow that up, to go up against a Temp Bay team that's kind of been a little snarly as well and defend the way they did and take the game to the Lightning in the third period, missing you know four breakaways alone. Like that, that I mean, That's the funny part is you know, Tampa's – whining and complaining about all the goalposts that they hit, but the Jets had all, plenty of opportunities on their own. And then to wrap it up in the third game in four nights, and then a game where you kind of just said, okay, you got four to four points heading this one. This kind of is a throwaway because we got what you needed. They they, they could have won that hockey game in, in Raleigh too. So I think you're seeing all these signs that this is turning around. They're starting to become much better in their own end. Yes, they made a couple of mistakes against Carolina, and the, and the Carolina jumps all over them and, and puts in the back of the net. 
but they're in the right place. They're in a good place right now. And, you know, you play Carolina who had one goal in their previous three games and you get the Boston Bruins who have lost three of their previous four and they look pretty snarly after their loss to the Chicago Blackhawks. So it's, it's, you know, it's, 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 we should move past. Yes. The big news is that Shifley, we Shifley, we sorry, Shifley Connor and Niederreiter got benched. But this is this is an epic tilt coming up tonight here at Canada Life Center. Well, well, I, I mean, obviously there were going to be questions about that, and it was addressed, yes. and we're going to hear from Connor a little bit later on. But I'll be honest, you know what my takeaway from the whole thing was? First of all, I think it was an important stand for Rick Bonus to take at this point of the season, reinforcing the accountability that is so important at this time. Yeah. The other part of it, though, Jamie, is regardless of what went down, whether the guys knew they were asked for it or, or, or weren't, yep. Nino Niederreiter – a new player two weeks into his term with the Jets. I'm not sure anyone could have handled that better. And from the sounds of it, handled it better while it was happening on the bench as well. And then, to be honest, said everything that I think needed to be said after the game. And, you know, he bounced back particularly well, scoring a goal later on. Um, But I really thought that set the proper tone for how you handle something like that. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, let's face it, a big story tonight is how that line in particular will handle themselves coming back. And uh, I'd be surprised if we didn't see some of the best of Shifley, Connor, and Niedermeyer, who are a Niederreiter, who are going to be playing together again. Yeah, I agree with you. He, uh, Nino handled that very well. Um, sometimes you only need one guy from the line. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, you would love to hear from Connor and Shifley, but Niederreiter said everything that needed to be said, like, like you mentioned. And, you're, and you are, to your listeners, to your viewers, uh, Kyle Connor handled himself very well today and said everything that needed to be said about how he felt about everything. Rick Bonus said they they responded well in the third period, and I agree with you. Like Kyle Connor, I think four goals in his last 21 games, but the chances are coming. So he's right. He had a great chance on a breakaway in in, in Tampa Bay. Like those, and he's getting some great opportunities. It reminds me of the beginning part of the year. He kind of got off to a slow start, but was getting those chances. So I'm with you. I think we're going to see a big game from those guys. They've been challenged um, by the coaching staff, uh, who they sat down for a little bit in that second period. Um, and now you, 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 this is what, this is when big time players respond. Um, you didn't, you had an off night. Now it's the time to, to answer that. And I believe they will. I I think, you know, it's too bad that Pierre-Luc Dubois isn't playing here tonight. I really like how that, those top two lines are going to look. Uh, now Nemestikov goes back between, uh, Wheeler, um, and Ehlers, which was one of the Jets' best lines on, on Tuesday night anyways against the Carolina Hurricanes. It would have been tough to break them up, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's just. I know Nemestikov was brought here to play in the bottom six and sprinkle in a little bit. And sure, that wasn't the plan for him to be the, the second line center. But this is the versatility that, that Rick Bonus was talking about. So I'm excited to see that. But man, it would just been great to see Pierre-Luc Dubois and Josh Morrissey come back here tonight. This one game only uh, homestand against the Boston Bruins because what a way that's going to, what a way that the, the, the lineup would look for that. But I'm curious to see how Shifley, Connor, and need a right to respond and also see if a continuation, if Nemestikov, Wheeler, and Ehlers can get it. Because another thing we are, we're not talking about enough, too, because of the other headliners, is Nikolai Ehlers is starting to skate well again. Like, this is everything that Rick Bonus and we've all, we've seen this before. When Ehlers is at his best, he causes all kinds of headaches for the competition because they yeah. can't deal with his speed. He forces you to break down and back up more than you want to. And we're seeing this now. Nemestikov, just that that hockey IQ, he knows where to go. And, you know, Blake Wheeler had some elite passes in that game against uh, Tuesday against the Carolina Hurricanes, too, as well. So it's just you want to see that. And then that third line again with Barron, uh, Lowry, and Appleton are, are really churning. And then the fourth line, like there's just the top, you know, one line was auto sync on Tuesday, but the other three were outstanding. So that you want that to carry over against the Bruins tonight. And sure, the Bruins, like everyone's, oh, oh the Bruins, uh, they've lost three or four. They're going to be snarly. Well, how about have some respect for the Jets and the way they're playing right now? They're, they're ready for this. They, they don't want to throw away everything that they've done over the last six games and bring a stinker out tonight against the Boston Bruins. Let's not kid ourselves about that.
No, no, absolutely. And you know what? Yeah. I mean, if you believe that you're a playoff team and you think you can make some damage, you know, make a statement against the number one team in the National Hockey absolutely. League on home ice in front yeah. of your home fans. You mentioned Ehlers. I, I, I've really been, I mean, the last week or so, he seems to have been just far more aggressive when it comes mm-hmm. to scoring. He's been shooting the puck more. And I have to say that connection with Nemetsnikov, he just seems to be in the right place at the right time, both defensively and offensively. We saw that rebound, he, uh, a goal he scored off of a f- quick face-off win, a quick shot from Nikolai Ehlerson going in. And you know, it was good to talk a little bit more about Niederreiter, but I mean, I-, I could probably put these two guys in together. I mean, I think both have exceeded anyone's expectations coming in at the trade deadline or need a writer a little bit beforehand um have both been very productive both playing significant roles in the top six um and we've certainly yeah. heard great things about need a writer but from the inside jamie around the club i mean how much yes. of a boost have those two players brought to the team and um what might fans be interested to know about the players and how they fit in with their new club and new teammates yeah, I, I think, you know, the funny part is like, you know, Nita Ryder would go to Carolina the other, Raleigh the other day and everyone could talk about how great of a guy he was. And it, you just, you can see it already. You can see the way he deals with us. Um, there was he's like excited 20 about signs this opportunity. for uh, Nita Ryder yeah. at warm-up. I mean, you, you, it was yeah. quite clear seeing the impact that he made during his time with the Canes. Yeah, Sebastian Ajo joked after the game that he had his head up because, you know, Nita Ryder was coming after him the whole game. And he goes, I thought we were friends. So, I mean, there's just... And, you know, speaking to the Carolina Hurricanes PR guy, Mike, Mike Sunheim, he's like, he's just a tremendous guy. And we hear this all. And this is a credit to the organization bringing in these character type players. You know, it's a, it's a tough time of the year. It's a tough time to move after you've been with your, it's the team that you're with for the majority of the season. Uh, but to be brought into a playoff situation the way Nino Niederreiter has, like a seven game point streak, you know, he gets a big goal in the third period after the benching, right? So there's just, it's that was a massive response from him and Nemestnikov has filled a huge gap like that's not easy shoes to fill with Pierre Luc Dubois being out of your lineup eight of your last nine games including tonight so for him to step in the way he has and and pretty much do everything Rick Bonus was saying he was gonna do uh, when they acquired him from Tampa uh, speaks to the professional that Nemestnikov is like he's a quiet guy but he's teaching certain he's teaching guys Russian you know, in the dressing room, like there's there's a little character to this guy. He's not he's and you've noticed already he doesn't back down. He may be a smaller player, but he does not shy away from going to the front of the net and going into the top areas. So it's just it's two key veteran players added at the right time that have a lot of NHL experience, which is exactly what you need at this time of year to help you get to where you want to go first in the playoffs and do some damage after that. But they have kind of righted the ship a little bit in their own small ways outside of the stuff that we see on the ice. Uh, Jamie, let's uh, talk about the blue line. Um, I thought Kyle Capobianco once again yes. got into the lineup and put it himself quite well. It, yeah. it, it's amazing. I mean, for a guy that has been out for such long stretches, um, he comes in and just quietly goes about doing his thing. That being said, the Jets are a much better team when Josh Morrissey's in the lineup. How's the yeah. blue line looking like um, with the pairings going into tonight? And just your thoughts on uh, getting Morrissey back and how important that is for the Winnipeg Jets if they want to win. Yeah, I think, you know, before we talk about Morrissey, I think we got to give some credit to Dylan DeMello and Brendan Dillon while J- Josh Morrissey the was out of the line. sniper, Brendan uh, yeah, Dylan like, DeMello. The, what a goal. Yeah, I know. Is there any... Like that is the most, that's the most bizarre play this year by far. Like I yeah. thought the whistle was going to blow, but Rick bonus talked about today, right? Whistle to whistle and Dylan DeMello, the most intelligent guy on the ice goes up and then puts a great shot past Freddie Anderson. Who's been like a pain in the butt for jets. Doesn't matter what Jersey he's wearing. He is a, a pain in the butt for anybody wearing a Winnipeg jet Jersey, but Dylan DeMello, the sniper and Brennan Dillon, you know, going to the front of the net on the game winning goal against Tampa. Um, just they, they played mar- fantastic without Josh Morrissey in the lineup, but you, you cannot replace an all-star defenseman. Uh, clearly, if you're, his body wasn't speaking to him the right way before an extremely physical game against the Carolina Hurricanes, I think it's the right choice to sit him out for that one and for him to sit out too. Now you bring him back in. The Jets played an excellent hockey game for 30 to 35 minutes against the Bruins back in December. Let's not kid ourselves. They're up to nothing. It was a terrible bounce off the stanchion oh. that goes back in the slot. Like that was, I mean, is there the any worst more luck home? of all? Like, <laughs> right yes. to Pasternak like, of just, all people in front of a wide yeah, open wrong net. Wrong guy, 
It's the worst thing ever. They played that game perfectly for 35 minutes. It just could not, you know, bounce back from the onslaught that followed after that pass or not goal. So I feel like when doesn't matter who's in that dressing room, Huss, whenever the Jets play Tampa Bay or Boston, they put up a fight. And these are two of the most entertaining games. Of, well, let's go four because they play each other four times a year combined between Boston and Tampa. Those are four of the most entertaining games of the year. It's too bad they don't play more because for whatever reason, the Bruins bring out the best in the Winnipeg Jets and the same thing with the Tampa Bay Lightning. And it's that I because I believe it's because the games are so physical and they're you it's the answering the bell against an elite team in the NHL. And I, I really appreciate where the Jets come from and how they play these games because you're we're always in for something. Sometimes it doesn't work out in your favor, but the game is entertaining. That game in Tampa was unbelievable. Not as crazy and wide open a scoring as we thought it was going to be, but that was due to the goaltending that night that night in Tampa too. So I just feel like they bring their game up, and it's the right time. Yeah, it's it's the one game homestand suck. It's just another. It's a long road trip that they're on right now, but this is another one to help you. You get the day off yesterday. You bring your game up and you entertain the fans here at Canada Life Center and hopefully you walk out of here with two points. Well, and, and I mean, these next coming up games are very, very important as well. Oh, and, my gosh. I mean, you know, the ability to uh, We say it every yourself, day now. Uh, well, for sure. But, yeah. I mean, let's face it, that yeah. afternoon game in Nashville, um, like yes. the Predators, and I, I've said this before, I was the first one. I mean, they traded all their guys. I mean, need a riders on the Jets right now. I had written them off. Yeah. They are they not do. going. They're not going away uh, easily, and that that game on Saturday afternoon really shapes up to be a massive game when it comes to the uh, the postseason. They'll worry about Boston tonight, but I don't mind yeah. the timing of this Boston game and then playing relatively quickly against Nashville um, because the Jets need to get to that level and maintain it through a really really yeah. important stretch uh, down the down the way here. Yeah, it's it's like it's just the way things have shaped out since that tough loss in, in Edmonton. And they've brought their game up to another level where they've been before. They haven't got the results, but it's just it's just you feel like it's coming. Like just to not melt away in the third period in a tough building that has been awful to them in Carolina on Tuesday. I just feel like the, the, the room is starting to come together now and they're starting to realize, you know, Josh Morris is coming back. Pierre-Luc Dubois is getting better. But in the meantime, they've filled the gap without those two guys on their roster. And you don't want to play 99% of your games without those guys. But the, in the meantime, the fact that they've responded the way they have, I think it's there. So it's a, it's a, another game tonight where you can start helping this continue to turn around and take some pressure off yourself before you go on that road trip to, to Nashville and St. Louis. But uh, I think it's coming. It's, it's, it's everything. The signs are all there. I mean, you have three out of four lines the other night. I think you have four out of four tonight, and you can't go wrong. And I forgot to mention, it's Josh Morrissey, Dylan DeMello, Brennan Dillon, Neil Pionk, Dylan Sandberg, and Nate Schmidt. So, well, and, and we and, listen, we have, we've, we have forgot to bring out how well Dylan Sandberg has played. We also forgot to bring up the fact how Nate Schmidt has responded to the healthy scratch. I was like, just going to bring that up. Well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about benching, you know, from the game. I, I mean, yeah. those guys weren't just sat down for shifts. They were out for, in Sandberg's case, a couple of games. And in Nate Schmidt, a very yeah. pretty public, healthy scratch from the coach that I think was a message to everyone in that room. Both of those guys have come back and played some of their best hockey. Sandberg just, I mean, comes back in and seems like he's never missed a beat. But I really think Nate Schmidt has looked considerably better after taking a dent night in the press box. And you can't ask a player to respond better than Nate Schmidt did while it happened and now that he's back in the lineup. Yeah, he, he's been great. And I think I spoke to him the other day in Raleigh about, about Dylan Sandberg. And I said the big difference between Dylan now – you know, a year ago until now, he just said he's just become more calm. And we see we see it on the ice. Dylan Sandberg does not panic. Like the, and the fact that he answered the bell the other night when Brendan Dillon was going to do it for him, like that that's big boy hockey right there, in my opinion. So you, I thought, oh, Dylan's going to answer the bell for him. Nope, please move respectfully. I'll take care of this. And then he played a great game afterwards as well. So there's there's a lot to like about the back end right now for the Winnipeg Jets. And then we've already talked it, a lot about the, the the forward group. So there's there's some good signs here, my friend. And I'm not just blowing blue Kool Aid up your butt. It just it's starting to look a little bit better here. Well, and I'll say this: um, you know, we can talk about the blue line all we want. I mean, the most important player mm. on this team wears a goalie mask in number yeah. thirty-seven. And I mean, yes. everyone saw what happened the week before against the Minnesota Wild. 
his response against Florida and Tampa. I yeah. He told us ever all we need yeah. to know. He got the night off against Carolina. You know he's going to be ready for this one. And I wouldn't be surprised if he plays both games on the weekend too, depending on how things go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then because it's a, the, the game against Nashville is an afternoon game, so you still have a little more time to recover as well before the game against St. Louis on Sunday. So I, I think what we have to remember here is – the type of goaltender that Connor Hellebuck is, and it's it's hard to find goaltenders like him. And everyone's going to have their tough periods. So the old Bronx cheer, I feel sometimes is not the right response to when tough. he's having a tough amount of time. Like I, that pissed me off so you, much. I'm still mad about it. To be body, honest with you, buddy. Like I, everyone can be. You can do whatever you want with your. You paid a lot of money to play the games, but there is a reason why the Jets are talked about every year as a playoff team, and it's because of the guy wearing number 37. So, it, and you know, so many teams in this league are desperately trying to find their number one goaltender. It's not easy to do. Ask the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, we can go down the list. Bo- Buffalo would be a great team if they could just find consistency between the pipes. So, and you think the Red Wings would kill for somebody like Connor Hellebuck right now? They would. They would probably be a playoff team. And Ottawa, like I can just go down the list of teams. Dude, there's that would 30 the teams in the Connor league. Hellebuck. Like, I mean, if you don't have Vasilevsky, yeah. I mean, even Olmark's yeah. been incredible, and he's probably the leader for the Vesna yeah. Trophy. I don't think you'd find a general yes. manager in the league that's taken him over Connor Hellebuck. I mean, that's just just no. the way it is. But this is an opportunity for him, I think, to both lead yeah. his team in the biggest test that you can have right now in the National Hockey League and uh, build off of a couple great performances on the weekend, and uh, they're going to need to keep on riding him. Hey, just quickly before we go, game tonight, um, they practice tomorrow and then head out or uh, leave after the game? What's the, what's the schedule uh, tomorrow before that oh, yeah. nooner? I think I think there's a scheduled practice tomorrow, but I'd be surprised if they skated, especially if they're leaving they're, they're, the flights tomorrow. So, um I'm fortunate for that. I know like in April, you remember that game where they'll play at home, the last home game, and then they go to Minnesota. That's like a takeoff after the game kind yeah. of night. But the, tonight we'll we'll be sleeping in our own beds before departing for the for Music City. And then a big weekend with Nashville and St. Louis on the docket coming up. But uh, all eyes on the Bruins and Jets tonight, 7 o'clock puck drop, Canada Life Center. Of course, you can You're coming, listen, right? listen to the... I wouldn't miss this. Come on. I, I never I miss. Know. This, no, no. You're, not coming. There. you're not selling your ticket for this one. Hell no. Hell no. No, listen. There's. Uh, <laughs> we've been looking forward to this one for a while. The stakes are high right now. Jets need to keep on putting up points in the standings with everything happening around them. And, uh, hey, no better way to show uh, maybe convince some more people that you're playoff ready than um, getting a win against the best team in the National Hockey League. Hopefully it happens tonight. Jamie, have a great broadcast tonight. Say hi to Pauly and uh, have a uh, safe flight with the club tomorrow to Music City. Thanks, buddy. (laughs) Have a good night. Good stuff. There's Jamie Thomas. Uh, You can uh, make sure to give him a follow and uh, check out all the content he and Paul Edmonds are doing over on the uh, Jet Socials, as well as, of course, 680 CGOB for the broadcast tonight. Um, hey, got to give a big thanks to our friends at Royal Sports. I'm wondering whether we'll see a 62 Niederreiter jersey uh, at the game tonight. Heck, I might get one. He's been that good so far. Uh, listen, if you need a new jersey for your new favorite player or uh, just looking to add to your fan gear for uh, the next game. Royal Sports is the place. Thousands of pieces of Winnipeg Jets merchandise, including many exclusives. A huge selection of Bomber merchandise as well for the football fan and the family. And heck, whatever your favorite team is, the Blue Jays in Major League Baseball, Raptors in the NBA, NFL, National Hockey League, Royal Sports has it all. Not to mention snowboards, boots, bindings if you're hitting the hills this spring and the biggest hockey selection in town. Family owned for over 35 years, Royal Sports is the sports superstore in Winnipeg, 750 Pemina Highway. And don't forget to follow them on Instagram at Royal Sports Pemina for the latest merchandise drops and sale information. Uh, A big shout out to our friends over at F Apparel. Spring is just around the corner, a busy summer as well. Weddings, events, guys, is your wardrobe ready? Well, it is if you head down to F Apparel. Custom suits beginning at just $400, but much more than just suits. Chinos, golf pants, custom shirts, both tucked and untucked, like what Remus was rocking yesterday. Um, They've got it all in the best selection of men's accessories as well. Pop down and see him at uh, 190 Smith Street. 
If you're at a wedding party, ask them about a 15% discount for the entire wedding party when you get dressed at F. And if you've got a 2023 grad in the family, get the young man hooked up with a new custom suit and F apparel will hook him up with a free custom shirt and tie valued at around $150. And just before we get back and hear from Kyle Connor, if you're looking for great prices on natural and organic supplements, beauty products and groceries, and Winnipeg's largest assortment of local products too, shop at any one of seven Vita Health Fresh Market stores or online at myvita.ca. St. Paddy's Day tomorrow, if you're looking for some great non-alcoholic craft beers or mocktails, they've got you covered. And with spring just around the corner, fellas, get ready for it with Ultimate Male Energy, formulated specifically for men over 35, Ultimate Male Energy is designed to help improve testosterone production, reduce excess body fat, build muscle tissue, maintain prostate health, and more. It's on sale today at Vita Health. Um, we're going to get to uh, Brandon or Wiki right away. And yeah, actually, maybe we'll talk to, uh, to Wix and then we'll hear a little bit more from Rick Bonus as well as what Kyle Connor had to say as they look to uh, rebound from a tough night in Carolina doing it up against the Boston Bruins. Let's welcome in our good friend and the host of the Skates and Plates podcast, Brandon Rowicki. Rowicki, what's going on? Were you at AEW last night? I was actually, yeah. I was uh, got, a, got a ticket from a buddy who's a diehard fan, so I was out there on the floor for all the action. Really? Floor seats? Uh, what, what an awesome show, huh? That was a really, really fun night. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Just it, it was worth it just for the for the Kenny Jericho pop at the end there. I mean, it was that 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 alone. I mean, that's kind of the reason that I was able to go see it. But I mean, two legends and and man, Kenny is. There, it, it's funny when people talk about like it factors and things like that. It's just really hard to explain. But you watch him, and I'm not a big wrestling guy or anything like that. But the second he steps out there, it's like. It's like a, a demigod steps into the ring, right? And then he just loses his mind. It, it was it was entertaining though. It was it was a really good time. I was I was glad I went. Yeah, cool, cool night for Winnipeg as well. We saw Kenny and Jericho both rocking the uh, Wasack Winnipeg Jets jerseys a little later on. And um, well, as they say, it was a great night last night at Canada Life Center. Now it's up to the Jets to send people home as happy tonight as people seem to be last night. Um, but before we get to tonight's game. What did you make of the road trip? And we knew the situation going in. You had to have some results. They really did get those in the first couple of games. And then a game that was eminently winnable doesn't go their way against the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, I mean, results-wise, that was as good as I think you could have hoped for. Had to have like, it. Two, yeah, two out of three against some of those teams. That's that's a, a massive – like if you're just looking at the – like screw the process for a second – it was absolutely mandatory the Jets found a way to get that done, and they did. They didn't play all that well, though. So, I mean, like, there's that. Like, I, I don't know. It depends how you want to look at it. I think at this stage of the season, and I think, you know, I know every team's going with injuries, but with the injuries they did have to deal with for at least half of the road trip there, I think that's okay. Like, I think, <laughs> I think you could maybe, you know, luck your way to a couple of uh, wins there. And then you went into the Carolina game, which was going to be difficult no matter what. And you're playing with free money, right? You, you lose, you lose, and no big deal because you were able to get the, the four points prior to that. But I thought, you know, I, th I thought the team battled hard. It wasn't like a lack of effort or anything like that. It, it, it's just the, the flaws are the flaws that this team has, especially when they're not fully healthy. But the strengths of this team, I think, sh you know, stood out in a big way and, and none more so than for the first 24 hours of the road trip when Connor Hellebuck said, Bronx cheer, Bronx cheer my ass. This is this, this is what a superstar does. And he he stole four points for them. Like that's that's kind of what happened. It, it's tough to say anything else there. There were some good performances, specifically by the new guys who have just kicked ass so oh, far. But yeah, but yeah, but it was it was, it was really Metznikov, uh, especially with Dubois being out. I mean, we spent a lot of time talking about Nino for obvious reasons. But Nemetsnikov has contributed in so many ways with so many different players already. Um, he really has been a godsend for a team that has really needed it considering Pierre-Luc Dubois went and missed eight of the last nine games. Yeah, and then Lowry's banged up on the road trip too. So he he steps in as 
Like he he's acquired as a depth guy, and then all of a sudden he's this team's second line center, and he, and he doesn't and getting look the best out of Nikolai Ehlers at the yeah. same time. Yeah, like and and he doesn't look all that out of place. Like I know you don't want him long term as your as your two C, but he's looked pretty good so far filling that role in a short amount of time. Um, he he might have been the team's best skater on the road trip. Like he he was just really really strong and. You know, I, I guess it depended, too, if, if Dubois was going to play tonight. And it, it looks like more likely than not that he's not going to suit up. But I, I was kind of surprised that the Jets, you know, and I, I wonder if they do this when Dubois is fully healthy and comes back here. If you don't have Nemesnikov and Ehlers on a line together, then you can go with more of a balanced top nine as opposed to loading up the, the top six like they've done for so long, right? I, I, I wondered if that might be an option Probably not against Boston, but maybe on the weekend if they wanted to go that route. I mean, why why not? Especially when Barons look great beside Adam Lowry, you know, for quite a long time here. And then you hope that the rest of the guys can deliver something up at the the upper echelon of the lineup. It's funny you mention that because we spent a pretty good amount of time yesterday thinking that Dubois was back in, trying to speculate as to how the lines would look. And I mean and it sounded like they were going to go with Shifley along with Niederreiter and Ehlers on that top line. And the one thing that will do, and I expect this to happen at some point, especially if Kyle Connor seems to be as snake bit as he's been and that continues, is to get Dubois and Connor back together. I, I mean, all you need to do is look at the numbers, and it's unequivocal. Kyle Connor has been the most productive this season and last season playing with Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now, it's not an option right now because he's not in the lineup. Um, but if you put those guys together, it does give you some other options. And I, listen, I'm sort of with you. I think Nemetsnikov is an option to stay in and around that top six. And maybe that drops Blake Wheeler to the third line. Although I think Mason Appleton's played some of his best games as of yeah. late. And that third line has been very, very impactful. But the bottom line is, if you have a player stepping up and earning a spot in there, the trickle down, whether you're moving a player to the fourth line or to the third and somebody else going down, I mean, that's a good thing for the Winnipeg Jets if they can get closer to full health. But in the meantime, both of those guys in so many ways have contributed and uh, have been worth the second and the fourth round picks, to say the least, already yeah. probably if they've been money well spent. Yeah, yeah, like if they were just rentals. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, Nino's, that was paid over already. <laughs> the fact that you get him for another year is just gravy. But, but yeah, I mean, I when, when, when the Nemestikov move was announced, I was, you know, this should be good for the third line. Or, or you know, you supercharge your fourth line, how, however it might go. But, I mean, you, yeah, some, sometimes guys come in and it just fits and it just works. And he might be one of those guys where, you know, you would never anticipate this going into a season to have, somebody like him playing a significant role and, and with some really, really high-end players. But if it works, why why go away from it? And, and I, yeah, I mean, if you're asking me, I, I kind of agree with you. Dubois Connor seems to be the 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 easy option there. If Nemestikov and, and Ehlers are going well, you know, why split those two up? And at that point, you can kind of throw the rest of the guys up there with Shafley, and you've got three scoring lines at that point. And that's, you know... That, that's how that's how great teams are built in the NHL these days. Great offenses, I should say, is that you need to have not a top six. You need to have a top six and then a third line that can go out there and score on any given night and a fourth line that can chip in once in a while, too. And with how well Nemestikov's been, surprisingly, you know, nobody would have thought of it, but it looks like the Jets might have that option, too, down the stretch. Um, Brandon, of course, the big story coming out of Carolina was um, Chifley... Kyle Connor and Nita Ryder getting stapled to the bench for the better part of 12 minutes. Um, what did you think about the what Rick Bonus did? Um, and I guess the biggest question is, just, and we'll find this out tonight, is how, in particular, 55 and 81 respond to that on the ice against the Boston Bruins. Yeah, I, I thought I thought Nita was kind of he bore the brunt of that one. Like I, I don't know, I've I've liked his game since he stepped onto the ice, and I guess. If you're going to bench a whole line, you got to bench the line. But I didn't think he was necessarily at fault there. And then scored um, in the and, third period. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? I, You know, to, to me, the story, unfortunately, isn't even what happened during the game there. Because we've seen, I mean, John Cooper, what was it, a week ago? Two weeks ago? 
benches essentially his leadership group for the entire period. And it's like, you know, we got standards here and it's not good enough. But but those guys also answer the Bell post game. And I know it's not like it, it it's might not be the biggest thing in the world, but it, it, it pisses me off that after a game like that, that your your leadership core doesn't step up to the mics and it and did it's seem a, weird that was it was Niederreiter. That being said, and we're gonna hear from Kyle Connor. He did say he got back there afterwards and his number wasn't on the board. And I mean, these guys aren't hoping, they aren't asking to go in. And I mean, that could have been an executive decision from the PR staff saying, ask for somebody else. Um, and, you know, I guess it's part of that job to not have a hot player go out and say something you don't want. Like, I'm not sure that the, I, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle of it, but certainly from listening to Kyle Connor earlier, um, uh, he basically said that he didn't know that he was requested for it and knew that people want to talk and, and talk today, which we'll hear from in a minute. I'll say this, though. You can say what you want about Shifley and Connor not being around there, whether they knew or not. The example that Niederreiter set, in two ways, Bonus talked about it, how even when they were benched in that period, how vocal he was supporting the guys that were playing. I mean, that's what you need from a great teammate and a guy that is a leader and Brandon, I'm sure you heard it. I mean, what he said after the game, I guarantee you that Shifley or Connor weren't going to say anything better than Niederreiter did, owning it, saying that they need to play better, it was the right decision, and then going out and making up for it. And um, he's been a breath of fresh air in so many different ways. We've seen a lot of it on the ice. Off the ice, we saw it from Niederreiter on uh, on Wednesday or Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's interesting how there, there's always an excuse for the same guys on this team like there's always something i don't know i i don't see this on other teams where this happens time and time again it seems to happen here in winnipeg so whatever the reason for that is i i, I don't like it I, I just don't like it right and it's not even like all it is is hey we played like crap we got to figure it out <laughs> right like it's not like you have to go up there and and defend your your livelihood or something like that it's just step up to them you, you step up after you score two like these guys all of you know miraculously find their way in front of a microphone after a three-point night. But sometimes, oh, I didn't know this was going on after we're dash three. So I don't know. I, I, I think you got to – doesn't really matter how you feel, what it is. You got to step in front there because Nino found a way to do that. But, I, yeah, I mean, Nino's been everything this team hoped and, and more when they acquired him. And it's funny, too, after, you know, hearing him talk and speak the truth, it's almost like they acquired Paul Stasty 2.0 in a way. <laughs> because when Stasny came in, he was exactly what they wanted to fill a hole in their forward group, and that he wasn't afraid to, you know, step in front of the mics and say what was on his mind. So, um, yeah, Nino's been great. The third period response from him is, I think, kind of what we expected out of him. And again, I, I didn't think he played bad in the in the first 40 minutes. It was just the line as a whole didn't play that great, and he was unfortunately dragged down for a little bit there. But we'll see what the response is going to be. Um, it's... It's been up and down for Shafley as of late. I think it's been more down for Kyle Connor for, yeah. for quite some time. I, I, and, I really like Shifley's engagement and his battle in the two Florida games. Um, you know, it, it kind of really stood out. And Bonus said, I mean, there was some great back checks, um, obviously scored a couple times. Kyle Connor's still getting chances. He had that breakaway. Um, for a guy that has scored seemingly with ease for the majority of his career, he's not used to going through these stretches right now. And, uh, and, I, and I really do think that it's kind of creeping into his game. I mean, let's think about why those guys were sat down. I mean, there was three goals against while they were on the ice. They had no shots, uh, no shot attempts for. They had 12 against. But if you think about that first goal, when Brendan Dillon is throwing the puck up the side with pressure on him and Connor flies the zone, I mean, I think that's a guy that just is trying so hard to get in a position to score you sort of lose sight of the things that you need to do for us you get, before you get there. And I mean, that was on display for that game. And listen, regardless of what we're going to hear from Connor, what he had to say today, whenever we hear from Mark Shifley, what I think the coaching staff, the organization and the fans care most about is how those guys come out tonight. And you want to measure yourself against the best? Well, you got them tonight in the Boston Bruins who have been um, – clearly a cut above pretty much the rest of the National Hockey League this entire season. Although as of late, Brandon, um, maybe just kind of hurry up and let's get on to the playoffs, losing three or four, including a shocking loss to the Blackhawks of all time. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to say, I, it was fun. my last episode. I was like, Chicago, Boston, Boston's only minus one and a half. Let's hammer down on this one. And then 
they refused to show up for the night. So that was awesome. But, um, you know, it's it's funny you mention Boston and, and Kyle Connor in that, too, because, I mean, the Bruins are, are, are clearly a wagon beyond belief this year. But David Pasternak is one of the few players on the planet that, that scores more, you know, on the wing than, than Kyle Connor does. But he does not have those same defensive deficiencies that number 81 has. And while it's a different style of player too, Brad Marchand, who puts up, you know, 90 plus points for how many years in a row now does not have those same defensive deficiencies as well. Right. So it's, it's like what you touched on there, flying the zone before the puck even, you know, gets to any of the jets forwards. That, that would never fly in Boston. And they seem to score just fine too, right? So I think that's still, you know, it's it's a few years into his career now, and, and you hope he figures it out. But that's still something Kyle Connor's got to figure out, right? Because he, you know, over the last several seasons has been one of the worst defensive forwards in the NHL. And I think when he goes through some of these mini scoring slumps like we're seeing right now, there, there's not enough in his game to provide a ton of value to the team when he's not scoring consistently. And so maybe just emulating what he sees out there against Boston tonight would, would probably go a long way for, you know, not just Connor, but Ehlers, for Shifley, for, for pretty much any forward on that roster right now that, you know, being responsible and extending effort inside your own end doesn't mean that you can't rack up points over there at the other end. And I think, you know, hopefully Connor can figure it out. Some guys figure it out later in their career than a lot of us would like to. Um but that, that to me right now is his biggest Achilles heel is not, you know, scorers go through slumps all the time. There's nothing you can really do about that. They score in bunches. They'll go five games without one. But it's what's the value you can provide when those pucks aren't going in. And we're just not seeing enough of that from Kyle Connor right now for the Jets to where he can help them win games when he's not putting up five goals in six games. Yeah, I mean, it's a great point. I mean, you can really get past uh, some defensive deficiencies a lot easier when – the puck's going in for you. Um, but again, maybe this is exactly what he needs because I think that if you're going to succeed in the playoffs, you need to be committed in both ends. And, you know, if anything, you know, this line goes out, you know, the goals will come, but take care of business as you did and as the other three lines were doing for the most part against the Carolina Hurricanes. And you'll get a better chance to score and you'll certainly give your team a much better chance to win. Um, we talked about Hellebuck and his performance on the weekend. Of course, Dave went in against Carolina. Helly's back tonight. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot of Connor Hellebuck over this next little while. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't at all be surprised if actually he plays all three of these games, including the back-to-back on the weekend. The back-to-backs that he's played this season certainly haven't hurt him. I believe he's 3-0 and on the second end of the uh, of those games. Yeah, he's the only goalie in the world that gets better on the second end of a back to like there there used to be that whole debate I, we would have it all the time, right? Yeah. Whether it was Pavlik or whoever it was. And I mean like the numbers do bear it out, but if you look at the numbers, Hello Buck's performance actually gets better. Like he's just a freak. So if they want to play him 3 and 4, I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I I imagine he gets 90%, 95% of the starts the rest of the way in until this team clinches a playoff spot. And I can't disagree with that line of thinking, right? I mean, you're 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 in a pretty good spot right now. If if you are the Jets, um, obviously the Nashville game is the the massive one for them. Where if you can beat them in regulation, then things start to look really really smooth. I mean, Calgary just looks like they've run out of it. They just don't have what it takes this year. Um, so, look, you got to fight for your life here. And no offense to Big Save Dave, but as he showed out there in Carolina, he's he's. He could be all right, but he's he's not going to be anywhere near what Hellebuck's giving you. And you just you, you got to find a way to get wins. He's the only guy that's been able to do that for them for quite some time. And the wins he's gotten them, the team have gotten horrifically outplayed. <laughs> so you you need to you need to rely on thirty seven down the stretch here. And uh, outside of you know Hellebuck saying I I, I just can't go tonight and I, I need a night off, he's going to be going the rest of the way here until the team clinches a playoff spot. And I can't I can't blame that line of thinking either. Brandon Rewicki is with us. Make sure to check out Skates and Plates wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Just stepping away from the Jets for a minute. Um, what a first week for Danny Briere on the job with the Flyers, eh? Is the uh, kids not helping him out? Uh, do you think that that has uh, that'll affect? Uh, and of course, I'm speaking about the incident with uh, Carson Briere's son at Mercyhurst tossed a 
uh, it's just a horrible video tossing a wheelchair down a hall. I mean, just kind of the worst of the stereotypical hockey a-hole guy. Um, listen, Danny Briere didn't do that. He was a loved player, respected throughout his time. Um, you, is he the most likely next general manager of the Flyers? And do you think that just the bad PR from this, which is really not anything of Danny Briere's fault, is um, will that be an issue around his spot in the organization over the next little while? No, I don't. I don't think it will be. I mean, his kid's it's twenty-three. It's just, yeah, it's just like it's typical Flyers, right? Like the, a shred of positivity, and then this just gets the, right. It's just beyond despicable. It's the worst. I I don't know what 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 could be worse than doing something like that. I, I just don't know how somebody could even think of doing something like that. The only way um, it could be worse I, if someone was in it. Yeah, yeah, right. Like it's just I. I don't know. I, I I was shocked. I, but you know, having said that, I don't, I don't think it really affects anything with Briere. He wasn't there, and you know, you can't control your kids once they become adults to an extent, right? So, um, I I think at this point it seems like ninety five percent sure he's going to be the GM oh, really? at the very least, if if not president of hockey. Like he's he's going to get one of the two jobs, I would imagine. Um, I, I think it makes the most sense to put him in a GM. And then have somebody with a lot of experience come in to be president of hockey ops. And then you have like a distinct hierarchy out there in Philadelphia. And, you know, personally, I, I like I li- if you're going to have a former player as a GM, I, I like when he's a skilled guy because they tend to uh, they tend to go out there and acquire similar type players. And those are pretty rare in Philadelphia nowadays. So so that part of it, I think, bodes well. He's, you know, started in the ECHL helping to build a team, I, I think, from Alaska or something like that. Like, he's he's put in the work, and it's not just, you know, let's put a former flyer in there and see what happens. He was a finalist for the Montreal GM job last year, and I think it's I, – I, I think he's going to be good. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what, what he can do inside that position there. To me, the big thing in Philly, which has been the problem for decades now, is it doesn't matter who the GM is. If Bobby Clark, Paul Holmgren, Bill Barber – the whole senior advisor crew, if they're still behind the scenes pushing the buttons, well, you get what you've gotten for the last 10 years. So that, that to me is the only thing that I think most Flyers fans care about is like getting Chuck Fletcher out was clearly the, the right thing to do there. But if the same old voices are still building the team the way they have been for, for 20 plus years, then it's just shuffling chairs on the Titanic. So uh, a full, a full house clean is, obviously necessary for the flyers but um good news is they found a way to plummet to fifth right now in the bedard race well, so that, and, that's and, it. And let me ask you this because wino was on with us yesterday and we just hit the flyers quickly on a couple topics and you know we talked about the potential of what happens if they win the draft lottery and they get connor bedard is John Tortorella the guy that's going to be um his coach for his first couple rookie years or does winning the draft lottery change everything and uh, maybe go for a full reset, including coaching staff? No, I don't think so. And it's funny because Torts has been the one since the season started being like, we need to play the young guys. <laughs> like, I, I can't remember the last, especially a, a coach with his, like, you know, every, everything that it, that is Tortorella. Right from the get-go, he's been like, and I you know, probably looked around and saw what he had. And he's like, we got to, like we got to help these young guys out here because that's the only way we're going to be good at any point in the next couple of years. So I, I think Torts is is down for a rebuild, and you know over the last little while, they're I mean they're losing a ton of games, which is great, but he's been playing these 20, 21, 22 year olds like 20, 22 minutes a night. He gave Owen Tippett twenty seven minutes uh, the other night. I it, it's I would never you would never think it, but I'm actually. I'm actually okay with Torts being the face of the rebuild here because he gets it. He's not he's not going to bring Bedard in and say, "All right, enjoy the fourth line in ten minutes a night for your rookie year, kid." If if he's going out there and he's putting the puck in the back of the net, Tortorella will be very happy to play somebody that could actually do that in Philadelphia. So I, I think Torts is here to stay. I think Briere's here to stay. Um, who the architect that gets behind all of it is 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 really the only question in Philadelphia right now. Hey, uh, see that psycho Bennington lose it again last night? Um, <laughs> like, 
what what is he doing and and how how thin do you think his act has worn uh, worn off on Craig Berube and I mean I'm just looking he does have a contract which extends what another four seasons after this but I really do wonder if Bennington is the guy in St. Louis next year or they um, try and make a move and move on from Bennington the guy that won them the cup yes and earned that contract but hasn't been very good this year and seems to have a real negative impact on the team and completely loses his mind a few times a season. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a child, right? Like it's, it would be one thing, honestly, if he, if he went after guys and it was like two, one or something, and he's just protecting his like, like Billy Smith used to do back. In yeah. the, like, like I could almost understand that to a point. And then it would be all, you know, a little entertaining, but he only does this when he's getting lit up, which happens, you know, on a regular occurrence nowadays. But he only does it after the fourth or fifth goal that gets by him. I, I think it's ridiculous. I, I think it's embarrassing. It's childish. Um, I, I know. I mean, Craig Berube earlier this season said, "Shut up and stop the puck," <laughs> right? Like that was that was a few months ago when St. Louis was in playoff contention, somewhat still. Never mind now when they're you know somewhere near the the bottom ten of the the NHL standing. So I, I, I yeah, I don't know what you do there. Um, I can't imagine any team takes that con that uh, it's a poison pill right now, right? So if they can't get rid of it, and if he's a negative influence in the locker room, may, maybe you just you bite the bullet on that one. And is it a buyout? Is it you know a trade and retain or something like that? I, I don't know. But I think I and 99% of hockey fans just wish that the linesman would have stepped aside <laughs> and good guy Marc-Andre Fleury would have got about 1,000 licks in. And uh, maybe maybe then maybe then the temper tantrum Bennington would stop for half a second. Flurry was more than a willing participant <laughs> last night. I mean, he couldn't get down to the other end of the ice fast enough. And um, you're so right. Why why are the refs stopping these goalie fights? Like, is is fighting not allowed in the game? I, I just I don't like the whole reason for fighting to be put in the game. I imagine is is for entertainment value, right? Like that's what the NHL wants to build itself off of. Goalie fights are the most entertaining <laughs> of all fights. I just, it's so great. Like, I, wh- why is there a line drawn where the linesmen have to step in? Oh, no, we got to protect the goalies from each other. But fighting's legal. So how well, fight? I, I get it. I get it in the cases. I mean, there's nothing more ridiculous than, you know, two goalies that are not involved in anything, like going out and meeting at center ice. But in the case last night, Bennington started it. Bennington was a central figure in the whole thing. And I'm sort of with you. If there ever was a time where – you could sort of let it slide. It's when Bennington's taking blocker shots at guys in the head yeah. after they score on him. I know. It's crazy. I just, I don't get it. I, I've, I've never understood this, why there seems to be this emphasis on removing it. Because you have fights in the game to get the fans jacked up. There is almost nothing in hockey, goals, hits, and that gets the fans more jacked up than a goalie fight. And I don't even, like, I'm not even a big fighting proponent in hockey. I want to see a goalie fight. Like it's entertaining to me. I I actually enjoy seeing two goalies duke it out like that. Um, I mean, I, I guess for Bennington's sake, he's just lucky that rest in peace, Razor Emery wasn't at the other uh, oh. at the other end of the rink, or else he might have uh, he might have pulled the net over himself and begged for the entire refereeing group to to, to, to keep remember, him safe. There. Remember when Razor fought Andrew Peters? Yep. I mean, like when you have goalies going up against the tough guy on other teams, R.I.P. And holding Razor, his own. <laughs> he, was, uh, he was unbelievable. Brandon, listen, this has been a lot of fun. We'll look forward to a new skates and plates tomorrow. I guess uh, recapping this game and then looking ahead to a massive weekend for the Winnipeg Jets, including that big matinee Saturday against the Preds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, two, two big games for, for two very different reasons. So we'll get ready for that. And we'll get ready for. I well, no, my bracket didn't get busted. I'm, I'm actually my my parlay is still alive thanks to Virginia losing their mind down the stretch, and then the Furman three bomb to to end that one. So uh, keep yeah, just stay tuned for tomorrow's episode if I'm going to be rocking a gold chain or something like that because <laughs> I'm, I'm one for six right now on the parlay. Oh, good stuff, man. Well, uh, maybe you can give me some picks. I have to admit, I was far less prepared for. March Madness and college basketball, but uh, we'll all be paying attention to it and we'll probably be betting on it too over yeah. cool bet. Have a good one, dude. Thanks for your uh, time. Yeah, sounds good. Have a good one, guys. All right, good stuff. There's Brandon Rewicki, new skates and plates tomorrow wherever you get your favorite podcasts. All right, we're going to hear a little bit more from Rick Bonus and Kyle Connor in just a minute. And later on in the program, 
Wade Miller is going to pop by and talk about the offseason for the Bombers and, of course, the uh, big announcement yesterday that the Grey Cup is coming to Winnipeg in 2025. Um, Princess Auto, great sponsor of the Bombers, I'm sure quite involved in that Grey Cup bid. Huge supporters of all things Winnipeg and your boys here at Winnipeg Sports Talk. Princess Auto is where you'll find the best deals and the most unique assortment of tools and equipment around. Everything you need to complete the projects on your list or start something new is at Princess Auto. Pop by and see them at one of two Winnipeg locations, Panet Road, Portage Avenue West, and you can always shop online 24-7, 365 at princessauto.com. Uh, if you're in the market for water, water services in Winnipeg, the Culligan team, family owned for over 65 years, has everything you need is the go-to people for all things water in Winnipeg, including water softeners, filters, bottled water coolers, whole home systems, drinking water systems, and citywide water delivery services, not to mention commercial and industrial water products and solutions. Pop by and see them at 1200 Sergeant Avenue. You can give them a call at 204-694-5180 or check them out online at drinkculligan.com for everything the Culligan team can do for you. Huge thanks to Culligan Water for their great support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. And hey, Shout out to the Canadian club folks. Uh, of course, we're going to be talking to Wade about the upcoming year. Cannot wait to uh, crack a couple of Canadian club and ginger ales at the game. We'll have to wait to get the IG field, but CC and ginger now available in large single serve 473 milliliter cans, which you can pick up at your local Manitoba liquor mart or your favorite beer vendor. If you don't see it, ask for it. And uh, they should have it right now. A couple other things. A week tomorrow is the Canadian Club 12-year reserve flash sale. Regularly, I think, 32 bucks on sale for 24 just for the weekend, March 24th to 26th. So if you like the 12-year, make a point to stock up on it next week at great savings from the 24th to 26th. And, uh, by, and tomorrow, I guess, is the big – or sorry, Saturday, the big day – the re-release of the Canadian Chronicles 41-year-old run from uh, a few years back, one of the uh, favorites of the entire Chronicles series. Found a couple extra cases back at the uh, distillery. Less than 100 bottles here in Manitoba. If you're missing it from your collection, get it on Saturday when uh, the release comes out. Huge thanks to Canadian Club for their support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. All right, let's get Remus back in here. Remo, just before we get to uh, Bones and Kyle Connor, uh, I had to ask you about the Bennington show last night. Uh, <laughs> just the guy gets so unhinged, and it's always humorous. It's fun when it happens against you because it usually means that your team's been lighting them up like the Minnesota Wild were doing last night. That's something you dream of doing as a goalie, just going up to a guy celebrating a goal and blockering him in the face. Um, unsuspecting Hartman. I guess Hartman scored and then uh, walked through the crease and grazed his leg. I thought, you know, Bennington maybe got in his way a little after. And then they're celebrating, and he just goes and, and blockers him and starts a big fight. And I think earlier this week, Mark andre Fleury said how much he didn't want to fight because he fought in junior and broke his hand and was out. And, yes, that is a risk. A fighting and he's a goalie and you're a pretty important player you don't you know be injured for fighting as a goalie it's not doesn't help but it was an 8-5 win for the wild and uh and he just gets gets crazy and he had a hearing today with the league i don't know what they're gonna do or the team does but it's just too you know it's happening too often to this guy and you wonder if he has to get some professional help here has huh, said to deal with <laughs> anger management hey i i, I would be I can almost guarantee that the Blues have thought exactly that. And listen, his act's wearing thin. We heard from Craig Berube earlier this year saying he needs to just focus on stopping the puck and not all the other BS. And, well, he wasn't stopping the puck last night, and there was quite a bit of BS. Um, but let's get back to tonight's game. Um, actually, before we hear from Kyle Connor, uh, this is a quick update from Rick Bonus Remo. Let's get to number seven. We'll play the last couple Bones uh, clips because um, the one real significant piece of news coming out of this morning um, was a couple of injuries. Now, Sam Gagne 
unfortunately, out for the rest of the year. Now, Gagne had not been playing as of late, um, but sounds like he needed a hip surgery and has had that and um, will unfortunately not be playing for the rest of the season. Um, but Pierre-Luc Dubois, we thought would be coming back tonight. Apparently, that is not the case. Here's what Bones had to say about the uh, about Dubois not coming back and how his lineup will look tonight. Dubi's out. Dubi's not going to play. So we're going back to the lines that we started in Carolina. We Casey, Mark, and uh, and and Nino, and we put uh, Nick back with Vladdy and Wheels. So we're back to that. Mo will play. Dubi won't. Yeah, and as uh, we talk with Jamie Thomas, Morrissey is back. He'll be with Dylan DeMello. We'll see Neil Pionk alongside Brendan Dillon and Dylan Sandberg playing with Nate Schmidt. Now, Sandberg had um, that hit in the Carolina game, which ironically led to Dylan DeMello's goal. Uh, but afterwards, for a clean hit, ended up fighting, I believe, his first NHL fight. Uh, Bones had some interesting comments on that situation as well as having to fight after a clean hit here's what he had to say when you used to get hit like that your your own teammates would get after you for keeping your head down right <laughs> they wouldn't even go out to tell you hey that's on you keep your head up and you don't get hit like that which which is true we never want to take those clean hits out of our league never those are good clean hard hits and the guy that delivers it shouldn't have to fight every time he throws a clean hit now there's an instigator rule that we put in in the 70s it, it wasn't for that uh, and I know why they put it in but if somebody wants to go stick for up for his teammates I'm all for that but if he has nothing to do with the play and call the instigator but if you listen to the guy if you think a guy went overboard and took a cheap run at your play and it wasn't a penalize you want to step in and stick up your teammate i'm all for that i mean I, that's not an issue for me but we can't we can't fight every time we throw a clean hit in this league it's just it's just not right uh, it's part of hockey and uh anyways uh so yeah that was a clean hit the scrum's going on one guy kept his senses and mel went down and scored <laughs> We just showed that. Like we always talk to our players, it's whistle to whistle. Play hard, whistle until you hear that whistle. And if you don't hear that whistle, you keep playing hard no matter what. You see lots of go, oh, that was offside, and they stop playing. Well, there's no whistle. Keep playing. And there's a perfect example of whistle to whistle. Keep going. And Mel had his uh, senses of him and went down and got a beautiful goal. All right, there's Rick Bonus and Rebus. That was... Uh... I mean, that was a funny clip, but also very, very poignant, I think. I still wonder why, in cases like that, they don't give out an instigator. They often will give maybe a roughing penalty or something like that. But, I mean, I don't know how what could be more instigating a fight than going after a guy that just made a clean hit. Um, but he did have a couple of good lines in there and a few laughs as he uh, explained the uh, his thoughts on the matter. It was funny that uh, you just talk about, yeah, DeMello went down and scored a beautiful goal. I mean, everyone's, and it was, it was a beautiful goal. Amazing shot from uh, the sniper, uh, Dylan DeMello. So I thought it was, I thought Sandberg stepped up and Martino kind of made a last second move, maybe got, you know, their knees collided. I didn't think it was anything uh, intentional. And I think, and when you make these last second moves, when a guy's coming up on you, um, you know, you can get a reminds you of Kaprizov. You know, Stanley's coming after him. He tries to make a last second move and it didn't work out for him. And and then Stanley gave him gave him the bonsai drop. So uh, it was a tough result there. And I agree, you know, hitting a guy is a clean play and you shouldn't have to fight. It's stupid. Um so and now you have to fight after uh, scoring a goal too. Uh, apparently <laughs> if you're the wild. So if what are playing St. Louis? What are yeah. we doing here? Yeah. So yeah, hand out the instigator for sure. Um, listen, just before we get to Kyle Connor and his comments today, uh, one more from Bones. And, and listen, I think like most of you will be focusing in on Mark Shifley and Kyle Connor and how they respond to what happened in Carolina. Um, also to see how they measure up against this incredible Boston team. And right there in the middle is one of the most complete players of this generation in Patrice Bergeron, who continues to play at an incredibly high level. Bones did talk a little bit about the captain of the Bruins. It's just, it's, it's just how long he's played and at a high level. You know, I'll tell you a story. So that year of the lockout in 04-05, when I was with the Coyotes, um, 
so I, we did some scouting. I went to the American League a couple of times to do some scouting. The year before, Patrice had played the whole year in Boston, and he went to he went to Providence that year. And I saw him probably play five games. In all five games, he was the best player on the ice. So that tells you about his character. A lot of guys would play a year in the National Hockey League as a 19-year-old and then go to the minors and not be happy about it. Every game, he was the best player on the ice. So that told me all I needed to know about his character. Uh, but then when you watch him play the game, I got his, his hockey IQ, his compete level, game, game in and game out over all this time is, is just very, very impressive. It goes back to his character. This guy is a wonderful person, wonderful leader, and one heck of a hockey, uh, uh, hockey player. And uh, he'll be in the Hall of Fame for sure. Yeah, a uh, high praise for one of the all-time greats in Patrice Bergeron from Rick Bonus. All right, let's get to Kyle Connor. It was much of was made of the uh, benching, or uh, as Rick, Rick Bonus said, not a benching, uh, just taking away a few shifts. However, you want to uh, describe it, it was um, a bit of a departure. We had not seen that very much, but certainly that line was struggling, and the other lines were going, as we heard from the coach. Now, um, regardless of whether they were asked after the game or weren't asked or the PR department said, no, we're going to get you someone else. Kyle Connor was more than happy to speak to the media today. And um, he started off by uh, talking about Coach Tuesday Jones night and uh, be out there being sat win, down but, by uh, um, Winnipeg you know, Jets head coach Rick Bonus. How you respond now? Because obviously as a competitor, you want to be out there helping your team win, but, um, you know, it wasn't going our way that night. How you respond now? Um, yeah, it's... Something that probably happens in everybody's lives. Um, obviously, pro sports, but you know you gotta you gotta go up and accept the challenge. And um, you know my my mentality, if, you know, if I ever have a bad game or don't like the way I play, is just just work twice as hard. Um, you know, come back in the gym, work twice as hard, extra reps, and um, you know try to prove that. Um, you know, it's just just one of those nights. All right, so there's Kyle Connor talking about what got them onto the bench. And listen, of course, uh, a lot has been made by some. Uh, about the fact that it was Nicola or it was Nino Niederreiter speaking after the game and not Shifley or Kyle Connor. Um, Kyle Connor sort of explained his side of uh, of that earlier today as well. A game like that. Um, yeah, that wasn't really aware of. My number wasn't on the board, and um, yeah, it's you know I'm here talking to you guys right now. Yeah. I, have, I have no problem with it. Um, so you weren't even asked. So. Yeah, the number was on the board, and um, so, yeah, kind of got out of there, and obviously knowing that you guys want to talk to me after that, um, you know, obviously a lot of emotions throughout that, and I'm sure you guys would have loved to talk to me right there, um, so it's, uh, I guess it's good um, to gather my thoughts the next day and kind of come back a little more composed, though. Yeah. Uh, interesting that he said probably a good time to gather the thoughts and be a little bit more composed, clearly. Um, you know, they weren't pleased with the way the game had went. And obviously, you know, at times being kind of singled out, normally being the go-to guys that spend all the time on the ice, not used to that extended stretch on the bench. Um, but hey, it's all about how they come back tonight. Kyle Connor talked about um, how they look to respond this evening against the Boston Bruins. It's about work ethic, man. It's just uh, coming back to your roots, playing your game. Um, you know, whether... Whether it's worthy of a, a benching or not in that in that period, it's it's what the coach decided, and um, it's it sucks because you're not able there to get back into the game and help the team. You know you're you're sitting there pretty cold, and um, I think he's just trying to send a message to us that you know it's unacceptable, and we know that it's you know we're we're well aware of it. We played a lot of games in this league. We know what what it looks like when we're playing the right way. Um, so yeah, if anything, we're we're motivated. Um, you know we're not. We're, we're all in this together. Like we want to win the Stanley Cup here, so it's it's no point fingers blaming. It's it's coming together, trying to work hard and you know improve on everybody's game and try to take it to the next level. You know? All right, big chance for a response from the Jets' top line. They will be together again. Pierre Luc Dubois not returning, although we did think we might see Kyle Connor going back with Dubois. Certainly, we talked about it yesterday as a possibility for Rick Bonus. Um, and a big part of that is that Kyle Connor hasn't been scoring as much lately as some, um, you know, you might expect. And um, Connor, one more clip from uh, from KFC, um, just talked about trying to get back in uh, a groove of uh, lighting the lamp. Yeah, um, 
keep playing the way the way I know I can. Um, don't don't shy away from taking shots. Don't change my game. Um, you know, it's a matter of time. You know, I've you know I've breakaway in Tampa. Obviously, pissed they don't score on that. Have other chances here and there. You know, you start looking when you don't get chances, and um, you know you start looking at ways to to create more. Um, sometimes that's not the right answer. It's just being a little more simpler. All right, so there's Kyle Connor today, and. Uh, you know, Remo, I thought he handled himself really well today. Um, you know, who knows what he uh, would have said or what went down with the not speaking after the game, but certainly owned it. And um, you can tell it's a guy that's trying to get back into a groove that just hasn't been there over the last little while. No better opportunity to show that you can step up to the challenge than doing it against the opponents that are here in Winnipeg tonight. Oh, yeah. Big game tonight with big opponent uh, Boston Bruins. Great to hear Rick Bonus talk about Patrice Bergeron and you know, we've talked a lot about Linus Allmark today, but it's actually Jeremy Swayman uh, who will be in goal for them. I'm going with the backup, but I think he's been excellent as well this season. So I don't, I don't, you know, see much of a you know, difference or anything. But the Jets are going to have to go. You know, we've talked about them scoring three goals and trying to get on the board. And I am looking forward to seeing what kind of response we're going to get uh, here from this Connor Shafley Niederreiter line, and more importantly, can Nino make his streak eight games? Hustler and also be seeing, I think Derek Forbort played here last year, didn't he? We're not going to be getting a Derek Forbort tribute video or anything. That already happened last year, right? Oh, good question. I think good they question. I think they had a welcome back video for him. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're I'm, right. I'm this pretty sure they did. But we have to mention the return of Derek Forbort to Winnipeg, who's <laughs> carved out a really nice role there uh, on their D pairing. Um, you know, I don't, don't know if we saw, you know, you know saw him on it. We got a championship caliber team as a impact defenseman, but um, I didn't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you straight up, I didn't. Um, <laughs> and I mean, he played seventy six games last year for uh, for the Bruins, and he's been in for fifty three so far this season. Um, you know, he really has had uh, a, a nice. I mean, he's fit in nicely in Boston, and I think coming out of Winnipeg. I'm not sure that um, you know a lot of folks would um, would have expected that. As far as the way the Bruins are looking going into tonight, Marchand, Bergeron, and DeBrusque, uh, Pasta playing with Krejci and Pavel Zaka, newcomer Tyler Bertuzzi with Charlie Coyle and Trent Frederick, and uh, AJ Greer, Thomas Nosek, and Garnet Hathaway. Uh, Har Hathaway, of course, coming over in the uh, in the Orlov trade. Orlov. Pairing up with Hampus Lindholm, who was their deadline acquisition last year and signed with that eight-year extension. Um, Grizzlick and Charlie McAvoy. And there's our guy, Derek Forbert, holding it down with Brandon Carlo on the third defensive pairing for the Boston Bruins. Puck drop 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, should be a great one. And uh, then the team right back out on the road to take on Nashville and St. Louis. Coming up on... Uh, Coming up on Saturday, 1 p.m. game, and then Sunday night as well. Um, hey, I'm just going to throw this into the chat here, folks. If you haven't already, hit up uh, the uh, the link for tickets to uh, our Winnipeg Sports Talk Sports Trivia Night. Uh, 13 days away, Wednesday, March 29th. Book it. Get your seats. Make sure that you are uh, counting yourself in. We had such a great time last, uh, last time we did it. Um, working hard on the questions. But um, hoping to see you all there. Just live it. Seating is limited, so uh, make sure you grab your tickets at that link. Uh, you can also go into winnipegsportstalk.com slash links if you're listening on the podcast or check out today's YouTube episode. There will be a link in the description of today's video. And uh, hey, speaking of, uh, of Little Brown Jug, I can't wait to try this. They're just launching a new generic lager. It's your basic lager, just better. Impressively standard in the best way. Light and clean to taste with a mellow flavor and crisp finish. Now Manitoba can support local without having to move away from the domestic taste they love come to expect with a light beer. Uh, I'm going to be jumping on that ASAP and maybe having a few when we see all of you down at Little Brown Jug on the 29th it's available in eight packs or by the can through the tap room or through vendors liquor marts will be available by a single can starting in june uh 2.99 for a single 473 and 19.99 for an eight pack 
very competitive pricing for a local beer and even some of the staples like uh, Bud and Bud Light. All right, great stuff from our friends over at Little Brown Jug. Get your tickets, get that link, and can't wait to try the new generic lager from our friends over at Little Brown Jug. And of course, a big thanks to our friends at the Nick and Nikki DQ Group for their great support of Winnipeg Sports Talk. Um, Nick and Nikki have been with us since day one, show number one. Now well over 500 shows with them on board. Of course, four locations, DQ Niverville, DQ Northgate, DQ St. Anne's, and DQ Polo Park. Pop by for a blizzard, maybe a flamethrower burger. And of course, you can hit them up on uh, Instagram at DQ Manitoba if you need a custom ice cream or blizzard cake to be done ready for you for a quick and easy pickup at any of the four Nick and Nicky DQs. All right, lots of hockey talk today with this big game tonight for the Winnipeg Jets. But a big announcement this week that the Grey Cup is coming back to Winnipeg in 2025. Huge for the city and province, very big for the Winnipeg Football Club. And to talk about it now, we welcome in Bomber President and CEO, Wade Miller. Wade, congratulations on uh, getting another Grey Cup for Winnipeg. How are you? Yeah, great. Uh, Yeah, exciting times for our city and province and uh, stoked uh, that we're able to bring back the uh, Grey Cup game and festival uh, to Winnipeg. How um how long has this been has this been in the works and uh, how much work goes into um, bidding on a Grey Cup? A lot goes into it. It actually uh, was our premier back in uh, at the Grey Cup in Hamilton in 2021. Who's who was uh, suggesting and and saying, Wade, when are when are we bidding on the Grey Cup again? Why why don't we have the game back? Uh, so it was really Premier Stephenson who really really started pushing us to say hey, let's get the game back. And she was right. We needed to get it back. So uh, so it's been in the works. It's been a long process, uh, you know, bidding on. The, it's different in the CFL. It changed back in 2018 where you actually bid on the Grey Cup now uh, against other cities. So um, so a lot of work went into the bid. Our, our team off the field did an amazing job in, in putting together an unbelievable Grey Cup festival and, and bid document to to win to win this for 2025 you know i i you mentioned how things are a little different now in the canadian football league in the distribution of the gray cup and the, the bid process considering the way things run right now how advantageous is it for a market like winnipeg which has um, really established itself as one of if not the best market in the canadian football league yeah, I, I think you meant the best market but yeah. I, you know i just didn't want to be i i, I certainly agree with that yeah, no, for sure. And, I, you know, what I would say is the, uh, you know, it's um, great to be bringing back the game to where, you know, CFL's last fans live and come to IG Field. And and as you said, we really set the example in the bar for the rest of the city, rest of the CFL cities. And, uh, you know, it's great to bring it back for our fans. And, you know, that 2015 Grey Cup we had here was just phenomenal. Um, you know, obviously been to all the Grey Cups and, you know, I'd like to think 2015 was one of the best ones that I'd ever been to or seen. And I think what people are going to see for our plans for 2025 are, are just going to build off of that. You know, I mean, I, I certainly understand why the premier or the mayor would be, um, you know, actively trying to get an event like this. But from a team perspective, um, how big of a boost is it uh, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to get the big game? It, 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 you know, great from a monetary perspective as well, but also for our fans. I, you know, not every fan gets to travel uh, to CFL games and, and the Grey Cup across the country. You know, we have got a great fan base that travels to every Grey Cup, uh, but it's great to make sure that our fans get that opportunity to be in the stands for the big game uh, every every uh, year. Uh, We know the Grey Cup Festival is a big, big part of the entire event. I mean, it's not just a football game. It's a week of bringing the entire country together. Considering the experiences you guys had in 2015, I mean, do we know right now how similar it will be? Are you planning some new things? I mean, uh, was there anything in the bid that fans would be excited to know that maybe wasn't there for 2015? Yeah, there. You know, we'll we'll you know we're obviously a, a bunch of years away from yeah. 2025. So, uh, you know, at the appropriate time, we're going to roll out those different types of events. And you know, like I said, I think what we've done is built on what 2015 was. And you know, 2015 was uh, that was a ton of fun. Uh, I know everybody that was involved in that needed some time to uh, recover after that week of, of events and. 
you know, and, and we weren't playing in the big game, obviously, but, uh, you know, it was still, uh, still an unbelievable week of events and, and we've got a few others that we're going to add to that. And, uh, you know, and also prior to the festival, you know, in 2015, we went up and did a, a great cup tour up in Northern Manitoba. And, and we're going to expand on that this year or in 2025 and just not go Northern Manitoba, but go East and West, uh, from border to border and, you know, and also make it out to Kenora too, right? Which we consider part of Manitoba anyways. But, uh, you know, we're, uh, so it'll be a lead up, uh, you know, six month lead up to to the Grey Cup Festival and, and look forward to planning that out, working with our host committee and just, and making it an unbelievable experience for Manitobans and more importantly, uh, CFL fans across the country and each one of our fans. Uh, Wade Miller of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with us discussing the uh, win of the 2025 Grey Cup bid for the city of Winnipeg and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I'm sure this was a big part of a lot of people's job over the last little bit, but um, I imagine things are quite busy at Bomber HQ getting ready to uh, kick off another great season in a few months. How's things going there? Uh, it's going well. It's, uh, you know, season ticket members are, you know, renewing and new ones every day and, you know, still the opportunity for season ticket members to sign up for this year. Uh, and secure your spot and your seat for 2025. And, um, you know, we get a lot of questions already of, well, how do I make sure I have my seat? And the first one is when you're a season ticket member, you get priority over your seat for the Grey Cup in 2025. And, you know, so planning is going real well. We've got some new uh, fan experience uh, type of uh, activations and, and uh, activities that fans are going to do at Bomber Home Games this year, which we look forward to uh, showing and uh getting our fans involved even even more. Hey, speaking of season tickets, I mean, it's well documented the job that you and the team have done off the field, and we certainly know what Mike and Kyle have done on the field. With the continued success and, I mean, the great crowds we've seen in the last few years at the uh, at the stadium, how much has that impacted the season ticket base? Uh, you know, it's it, it's been very solid and, and grows and, and stays, stays about the same every year, which in professional sports is actually a huge win because – uh, you know, season ticket, uh, people buying tickets for an entire year have changed a little bit, right? And people want to go to the games they want to go to, but we've done very well with that. Um, you know, our season ticket members get that advantage of uh, saving up to 40% off the tickets, uh, you know, retail discount of 15%. And, and I think what one of the coolest things that we're able to do for our season ticket members is those game day experiences. And the game day experiences every season ticket member is entered automatically for every game for one of four season ticket member experiences from uh, sitting on the player's bench during warm-ups before the game to running out of the tunnel uh, with the uh, you know before the team takes the field you know you see those 30 people and the crowd's already loud so you don't know why you're seeing 30 people run out on the field those are our season ticket members that won that won that contest to do that for the day right or or it's a sideline experience that they get pregame sideline experience and then the honorary team captains walking out for the coin toss you know those are some pretty cool experiences that that we're able to create for our season ticket members and love doing so well uh, we've had some winnipeg sports talk listeners and chatters that have uh, done it over the last couple seasons and absolutely raved about the experience uh at the end it is a, a results-based business though we know the results on the field have been great although falling just short in last year's great cup how are you feeling about the squad and the work that uh, kyle's done in the off season and the return of kenny lawler what an impact signing that is oh for sure i you know i you know kenny lawler and look at the rest of that receiving core um you know, I'm not sure. That You've been around cool. this team for a long time. Is this the best receiving core on paper we have going into a season that you can remember? Uh, uh, without a doubt. I mean, the last one that probably uh, rivals that is uh, 2000 or 2001 with that group of receivers. And then before that was the James, Mur James Murphy, Jeff Boyd group. But, uh, you know, for sure it's, uh, it is by far on paper, you know, that group is stands out, right? Um you know, if you're a defense coordinator in the CFL, I'm sure you're not sleeping too good right now with uh, looking across that line of who, who has you know, the targets that 
Zach's going to have coming into training camp in the season for 2023. Well, not to imagine. I think uh, just in general, we've talked with some of the players. I mean, a real unfinished business mentality for a football team that, um, you know, has been so good. But uh, I'm sure that loss in the Grey Cup is going to really motivate everyone from the first day of training camp right through, hopefully, to getting that thing back in Winnipeg. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, you know, that's what makes football such a great sport is it's it's one and done every game and there's no no series and you, you, you got to perform that day. And, and we came up a little short and, uh, you know, I, and, you know, you can kind of get your head wrapped around it sort of, I guess, but uh, never, you, you never forget those ones. You don't forget them when you're a player ever. Uh, I can speak from that from 2001. I, you know, you don't, you don't forget those ones you're paid to win. Um, and the focus that I, I know our guys are going to have in as an organization is, getting back there, as you said, and, and bringing home the cup for this year. Well, I guess uh, what would be ideal is maybe you have a uh, be defending the cup in 2025 after winning it a couple more times. It all starts coming up in training camp. Um, and, of course, we'll be in connection with you guys about information for the Grey Cup in the upcoming season. But just before we go, Wade, uh, if uh, you'd like, uh, give a quick uh, plug to the fans on uh, the upcoming season and uh, how they can uh, get involved with the Bombers and uh, maybe become a season ticket member. Yeah, so uh, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, bluebombers.com gives you all those options of buying a season ticket member package or, you know, buying a flex pack, whatever may be the best for you. Call, chat, text our people. Um, we've got an unbelievable organization on and off the field, and our fan service team is there and uh, just so proud of, of our organization and, and the work we do for our fans. And, and we really talk about it's fan first, one at a time. And we really believe that in that game day experience starts when you show up to the Princess Auto tailgate area early on, uh, you know, get there early for the games. We have a, our specials are back for this year prior to kickoff. You know, I'm not sure where you can go get a five dollar beer with your taxes included in that or a three fifty dollar hot dog or soft drink. So uh, we got you covered before the game and and, you know, come come early. And, you know, it was the West final last year was interesting to see how many people were in their seats early to watch the warmups. And, and that's what we want to see is, you know, those warmups become just what it was in the West final. And that, that I think is maybe the next evolution where our fans go of getting to that stadium even earlier and, and, you know, being there and getting the, getting the players going. And it really matters. Like, you know, our, our fans make that difference and people talk about the 13th man and everything. But we know that it impacts other teams when our fans are allowed at IG Field. Well, I think the fans have been a big part in being able to keep this team together. I mean, why so many people and players want to make sure that they stay as Winnipeg Blue Bombers, not to mention yeah. the success you guys have had on the field. Well, and make Winnipeg their home. You know, like you, yeah. you know, there's a ton of guys living here year round now, and they just love come to Winnipeg, and they come out and are part of our youth football programs that we have going on in the winter and. You know, we've got over uh, 600 kids that play tackle football every Sunday in the indoor facilities, and our players are out there uh, some days working with all the amateur coaches and, and making football better in this province as well and all the different community initiatives they're a part of as well. So just uh, proud of the entire organization. Wade, cannot wait for the upcoming season. Congratulations again on the 2025 Grey Cup. What an event that will be. And uh, we'll look forward to uh, catching up with you as we get closer to the season and seeing you at IG Field for Winnipeg Blue Bombers football this year. Great. Thanks very much. All right, great stuff with Wade. Lots of uh, lots of positive uh, chat, um, comments in the chat on the upcoming Bomber season. Lots of people thinking about season tickets. And I think it was BA that mentioned Carol Barrett. What a pleasure it is dealing with Carol. She's been there for a long time and is, uh, many would describe the glue of the uh, of the office. Got a chance to uh, get helped by Carol when we were getting Winnipeg Walter his seats after the big Marbles Tournament of Champions victory. Shout out again to Joe and Consolidated Supply for supporting that. Uh, but yeah, won't be long, folks. Won't be long. Snow will be gone. We'll be getting back to IG Field. All right, before we are uh, finished up today, let's get to our cool bet lines today because we've got a busy, busy night in the National Hockey League. Many options um, to hit it up. We got the Panthers minus 336 favorites against the Habs. That is a game Florida has to have. Tampa's in New Jersey. Excellent matchup. Jersey minus 139 fave. 
Lightning have, haven't been quite at the Lightning level. We've come to expect lately. Plus 118 underdog on the road. Penguins and Rangers, minus 138 for the Rangers, plus 117 for the P- Penguins. Uh, Remo, much like uh, Sean McIndoe said last week, should we just start this one in OT oh. as well? Yeah, I like that one. Yeah, for sure. Plus three forty five on the uh, on the draw. How about if you'd like it? How about Mister Overtime Dallas Edmonton? Although I don't know, that could be could be a lot of goals in that one. Yeah, that for sure. Colorado's in uh, in Ottawa to take on the Sens after uh, the uh, win in extra time yesterday against the Leafs. Minus one twenty eight for the Abs. Uh, the Predators, no surprise, big favorite at home against the Blackhawks. Minus two sixty two. They win that game. The Jets don't get points tonight. That is going to be a uh, huge, huge game. It already will be on Saturday, but the Preds could be, in fact, even closer depending on what happens tonight. Jets are a home underdog, plus 135 at home to the Bruins. Uh, you got the Oilers, minus 141 faves at home against the Stars. The Canucks, one five in a row, playing well right when they don't need it. Uh, minus 149 for Vancouver against the Coyotes. <laughs> Although Coyotes always seem to win at home. Actually, they're going to be on the exclusive. But the other game, the tie game, Remo, uh, Calgary-Vegas tonight. Minus 107 for Calgary. Minus 110 for Vegas. And that that one's got three-point game written all over it to me. It's funny. I keep seeing a lot of the comments about um, the Flames, like from their fan base, about how they can't show up in big games. And I... See a lot of parallels with the Jets, except I think the Jets are better than the Flames. Funny, even when the Flames are like leading against who was it, Anaheim game ends up going or was it no sorry, the Coyotes the other day they were leading and the game ends up being a tie. So the Flames have had a lot of overtime. Well, and they only got one point. Yeah, they got one point there. So uh Flames fans not happy with their team. Uh, I feel no, like they're not d- not gelling. Um, two other games, Kings at home to the Blue Jackets, Kings minus 271 and the Kraken minus 168 favorites on the road against the Sharks. Uh, and coming off the big win on our exclusive on Tuesday, I promised I'd put another one together for Thursday and it's up right now at the cool bet exclusives ride with us avalanche to beat the Sens, Kraken to beat the Sharks. And Vancouver won it for us on Tuesday. We're fading them this time. We're going with the Coyotes to win and continue their great run at Mullet Arena. That one, when I put it in manually, was plus 534, I believe, and uh, got a nice plus 615 number. So if you do like those games and you want to ride with me, get the better number over in the exclusives. Click on the Lock Shop Partner Parlay. And by the way, if you haven't before and you'd like to play at Cool Bet, March Madness is here. Can't go through all of those games, but uh, tons of options for you. Use the promo code WST when you're making your first deposit. We'll hook you up with a 100% bonus up to $200 on your first deposit. Um, Great show today. Thanks to uh, Jamie Thomas and Brandon for bump, jumping on. And of course, Wade Miller. How are you feeling about this one tonight, Remo? I, I'm actually, I'm fired up to go, but I've, I don't know. I've got some good vibes tonight about the Jets coming back and seeing how they can measure up against the Bruins. Yeah, Money Puck has them at 46.2% to win, so I think closer than you might think. Um, Hellbuck was really cheap on DraftKings. I considered taking him, but I'm not sure. I think I'm going to go with the emotional edge on that one and not and not take him. But yeah, I'm feeling, I think I'm feeling pretty good. Better than it would have been, I think, uh, you know, maybe earlier in the year. Uh, they played Boston really tight, uh, you know, in Boston. We all remember that stanchion. Oh, I'm still goal. pissed about that. Like that was, which kind of turned the game there. So I think the Jets, they're going to, they seem to get up for these big games. And I, uh, I'm feeling like it's going to be a good one. We did get some breaking news that does affect the Jets on Jordan Bennington, NHL player safety, just announcing literally a, se- a minute ago. He's been suspended two games for roughing oh. and unsportsmanlike conduct. So that means he, he's going to be suspended for, idiot. for Sunday's game against the Jets because they play tomorrow in Washington and Sunday at home against Winnipeg. So uh, we won't be seeing Jordan Bennington, which is actually probably a bad thing for the Jets. This the suspension is bad, bad time for the Jets. His numbers are not great. So I would have loved to have seen him on. And by the way, um, normally I don't promote Alan Walsh's tweets. However, 
the agent for a number of NHLers, including Mark Andre Fleury, tweeted out, and it's at Walsh A. Um, Mark Andre Fleury was mic'd up during the game last night, so it it's got a great ice level view of him running down trying to go at it with Bennington and a very funny conversation with the referee. So check that out wherever you get your uh, on your social channels. Um, enjoy the game tonight, folks. We got a huge show tomorrow as the Jets head out to Music City for that massive matinee on Saturday afternoon. Scott Billick will join us. Ken Weeb is going to join us. And we haven't spent a lot of time talking about all the craziness from the National Football League this week. But there is lots of it, and Hacksaw is going to be back to fill us all in. So, in the meantime, enjoy what should be a great hockey game tonight down at Canada Life Center. Might see you there, and if not, we'll see you tomorrow, 1 p.m., live on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Thanks for being with us, everyone. Oh, my God! Shut it down! Let's go home! Thanks for tuning in to Winnipeg Sports Talk Daily. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and your favorite podcast feed at winnipegsportstalk.com.